Let's get some F's in the chat, boys and girls. It's a sad day for Reddit. It's a sad day for America. F's in the chat, boys. F's in the chat. I'll see you at the crossroads, crossroads. Oh, some of you don't know. Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed to September of 2020. F's in the chat, boys. F. F. Aha, so the streamer was in the know, and chat was the one who did not know. Chat doesn't know. <laughs> the streamer did. <laughs> Alright, so. F's in the chat. Chat doesn't know. Alright, what, what, what would be the funny tweet? Um, F for Reddit. Hmm. Hmm. What would be the funny tweet? Wasn't... Final Fantasy 7 also delayed? Yeah, and it's really convenient because, you know, you type out that name and the F is already there, right? <laughs> like, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> uh, a reminder that um, uh, extending an olive branch to the weebs um, and also just to lead them on because there's no way they're getting it. Um, Ayaya coins. Uh, Ayaya coins. Wow. That's what they are. Apparently that's what they are. They're not mono coins. They're Ayaya coins. <laughs> Mono coins are worth double uh, on the 29th of January. So if you would if you would like to um, save up your mono coins in order to uh, use them, uh, any reward is worth double on that day, apart from the the highlight message and the emote ones because I, I can't control those. So um, yeah, but dad joke. I'll read I'll read two pages of the dad joke. Uh, I will say on stream your wife your wife who's best girl. Like I I will I will do that twice. Um, if you make me dab, I'll dab twice. If you do the AI on a coin fund, we'll, d we'll deduct 40,000 instead of 20,000. And if you spend it on absolutely nothing, we will deduct 40,000 off of absolutely nothing instead of, instead of 20,000. All right. You're just going to double the price on 20. No, nope, no, nope, no bamboozle. No bamboozle. I promise. All right. Here's, I, I promise no bamboozle streamers honor streamers honor. I will not double any prices. I will not mess around with the prices at all, but before the 29th or on the 29th. And um, it, I, 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 I can't promise I'll stream on the 29th because I might I might die, you know what I mean? Like, but I currently have no plans to not stream on the 29th. I'm not streaming on the 22nd, but I have no plans to, to not stream on the 29th. Streamer honor is, is uh, worthless. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Streamer honor, streamer honor. When has anyone ever said streamer honor and then not, um, and then gone back on their word? Like, come on. Today, today is one of my favorites, uh, um, funny, uh, Disco Elysium titles, by the way, Pillow Pandemonium. What have we had so far? We've had B Bistro Asylum, Discord Museum, doesn't make sense anymore, Ditto Emporium, Weirdo Delirium, Picasso Presidium, Hippo Condominium, Retro Planetarium, and Pillow Pandemonium. <laughs> Do you guys want me to read out the other ones I have, or do you want to wait? Snow Halation. Wait, so I'm delayed? Yep. By, like, a lot. <clears throat> it got delayed by a lot. It's not just a little delay. When was it due out? March? April? So five months? Five months? Five months delay? April? May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, five months. Five months. They're scared of Final Fantasy VII? No, I don't think Cyberpunk has any anyone to be scared of. I think that... Um, they're, they just need more time to, to finish the game. It's a good thing though. No, I'm not sure. Um, this year's pretty stacked and having the game spread out a little bit more. Mm -hmm, I don't know. I have a feeling there's going to be some surprise releases and maybe some things that have been announced that get confirmed release dates for the end of this year. So it looks like the end of the year is going to be pretty stacked as well. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out this year. When is the next Double Yaya Coins event? I won't be able to be here on the 29th. This is the only one ever. This is the only one we're ever doing. There will never be another dab double Ayaya coin event after this. Bayonetta 3. Huh. <laughs> Someone thinks Bayonetta 3 isn't vaporware. Actually, I, since, I shouldn't say that. I have no idea. I just know Bayonetta 3 is, is this, the bait and switch, part of the bait and switch that um, Nintendo did with the Switch. Yeah, we're, sh we're totally going to make these games, and then, oh no, we're not. Small windows tape show with black plastic. You can't see outside. Uh, speaking of Nintendo, uh, Finn is currently playing Super Mario Odyssey, and uh, he's enjoying it quite a bit. It's it's um, it's interesting seeing a child play it, um, because you get to you get to like understand the intended experience a lot more, especially a very young child. Um, so 
you know, there's a lot more wandering around and not really understanding where you're going. Um, and uh, the game seems to facilitate that quite a bit. I remember when I was a kid playing 64 for the first time, and uh, not not very objective based at all, just kind of wandering around, being like, okay, I kind of have a vague idea of what I'm supposed to do, but let's just let's just wander around, and look at things, and just just enjoy moving. And I think that's what Odyssey pulls off. Reckless enjoyment. No, no. This, I even say in the video, I um. One one of the only few things that annoys me about the about the criticism of the Odyssey video is that uh, the, the, this comment gets Pope gets uh, on the video fairly often, not all the time, but fairly often. You know, it's a kids game. Why are you judging it as anything but that? I'm like, I say that in the video. I say in the video, if it's judged as a kids game, then it is a masterpiece. You know, like it is definitely for kids. The problem is not um, that I'm judging it as a game for adults. Is that everyone else did too? You know, so yeah. Is he gonna make a response for your for, to your review? I I've already told him. I was like, Finn, Finn, um, Daddy made Daddy made a video on this game, and um, because of that, there are there are tens of thousands of people in the world that now hate Daddy, and and Finn's just looking at me like, I, I don't understand anything. <laughs> I don't know why you're telling me this. I don't get it. <laughs> but it'd be it'd be funny him watching um. Uh, watching a video, box of tools and replace some parts, line and shells. Watching a video on a game um, when he's older and he can actually understand it. Uh, the only video he's watched of mine is the Stardew Valley video because he likes playing Stardew Valley. He d he doesn't like understand what to do in it all that much. He he does like he he understands how to like plant crops and and water them though and harvest them and sell them for money. Like he he, he can understand that, which I like I, I blows my mind that he can do that. Um, but like he he will. He doesn't. He can't read yet, so he doesn't really understand the intricacies of the game. Um, but he watched the Stardew Valley video, and um, and he just like was just shouting at the screen, telling me to do different things. You know, go to the mines, go to the mines. He doesn't. He doesn't understand that it's a it's a recording. Schematics for a pinball machine, futurism themed. Empathy, hand eye coordination. Ooh, pinball maker's coat. Nice. Let's give it to to Kim. Empathy. Nice. So it seems like coats are the. Uh, are the best. Some love for Kim. <laughs> Aww. Thoughts on the game so far? I really like it. I really like this game. Yeah. Uh, if I wasn't in, in um, Witcher Hell, I would be uh, streaming it more to, to, to finish it faster because I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah, I like this game a lot. Best boy back at it again. So when, when that's down there, it's going to be like pointing over with a heart toward Kim. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Wait a minute. What's that? Enhance. Enhance. Can't believe this. Well, apparently I just fit the, um, the stream to screen. Hopefully that's all right. Thank you again, Q2. These are amazing. Uh, I think we still have quite a, a long way left with this game, so please don't feel like obligated to, to keep this up because like I like these are like fairly like I imagine they're intensive to, to create. But yeah, please please um please don't think like you have that you have to keep it up. But they're amazing. Was that Yusuke from Persona 5? Yeah, because we're art cop, yeah. We're doing a Yusuke run kind of. We're like half role playing as uh as uh, as Yusuke from Persona 5. Why is this rip Cyberpunk 27? Because it got delayed. It got delayed. Uh, I really didn't think it was gonna get delayed. Like I had an I had an inkling like earlier and and I dismissed it. I was like, no, like the way that they hyped that up that release date, I'm like, no, that's coming out then. And then it's like, wow, okay. Like holy shit. <clears throat> Honestly, it's good that it's delayed, but I'm still sad. Yeah, yeah. When any and whenever anything is delayed, uh, it's usually for the better. Like it ends up being a better a better uh, product because of it. Right? <laughs> You know, games, movies, YouTube videos, music, you know, um, uh, maybe even streams. No, not streams. You know, when, whenever someone gets delayed, it's usually for the best, right? It ends up being a, a better experience due to the delay. Um, anyway, uh, let's get started. Pinball Machine has ta been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought faulty pinball machines to fix them up a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now.
The tenant looks around in a dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. Looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point. This used to be a pinball workshop discarded. This used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall next to the main door, one of them even works. I've seen one of the Hardys bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means Whirling and Rags was once the East Delta pinball arcade. That This is all left over from that. And this is cool. This, like The game makes so many connections. I, th I saw someone in the chat in Discord say something about how like they didn't... Um, they didn't see something that I saw, and they're like, "Wow, I, th there's this whole kind of like the lore of the game that they that they were uh, completely unaware of because they just didn't do those choices." Um, and I think I think Ilsaroth was telling me about um, like he he didn't see this part on on his playthrough, and he really likes Kim, so like this is a whole side of Kim that he didn't even see. So like it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, remember the dice maker. Ah uh, yes, as the novelty dice maker said, he makes a note in his note in his notebook. This has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure, but I do like a nice little connection. Yeah, yeah. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Looks like they gave up fixing the whole machine. At some point, he agrees. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Could this mean that the whirling and rags really is part of the doomed commercial area? <laughs> That's true. Then our cafeteria manager is not gonna like it. <laughs> Kim, why are you going along with this? He looks around. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. Uh, he does not appear to to be the kind of man who likes to establish and be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Super superstition, but still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. It, it's not a ghost story. It's a curse. And Gart ought to be able to... Ought to... Ought... And, and Gart ought be made knowledgeable so he can perform counter spells. Kind of awkward to look at, but it's actually correct. All right, finish thought. All right. Finish thought, finish game. Footprints. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. The lieutenant takes out his notebook. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum from the dust coverage. You could easily have been... Could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer, he looks at you. It was us. This is so good, it makes him forget the whole Kimball memory. It was a stereo investigation, after all. And it has now converged with our main investigation, adding a new fact to consider. Okay, what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind Class Classia? Classia? Classia, right? Classia's room. In the recent weeks, this may prove to be significant. Let's have a closer look at that and crouch. Study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. I don't know that term for shoes the soles have left the pattern uniform horizontal lines one person has been here they've gone back and forth the tips point both ways shoe size is 41 42 maybe 43 it could be a large footed woman or a small to average footed man this is unfortunately the worst most vague shoe size there is hmm. is that one of the shoe sizes that we had in the in the uh, crime scene hmm the prints look like one person went back and forth. This print doesn't look like the odd salt print we found in the hanging came. Oh, it's bringing it up. This doesn't look like the workers' boots on the hanging, does it? Between that, he points to the elevator doors in the corner, and that, he points to the barred door. He inspects the tracks closer. The size looks about the same. Actually, they're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. This doesn't look like the worker boots on the hanging. No, these little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me, or some kind of form print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. Get up. Vamp is the front of the shoe? Okay, thank you. Everything around you is quiet. The prints cross, crisscross the vamp, the workshop floor. It's vamp, but not that kind of vamp. How's my shit post tweet doing? <laughs> okay, I don't know who made this, so maybe I shouldn't put it on the screen, but fuck it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, because this is funny to me. Someone just tweeted this at me. Okay, it's a JPEG, so why isn't it showing up? Weird. Well, that's anticlimactic. I can't show it, even though it's saving as a JPEG. Hmm. Now I have to show it, right? Now I, ha I now I have to find a way. Here you go. <laughs> so, uh, Twitter user Ab posted this at me. I don't know if he made it or if he got it from somewhere else, but. Um, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck.
First time I catch a stream, I got no idea what the fuck is going. Yeah, this is a really bad first stream to watch. Um, it, it's also like we're in the middle of a very dense game that's that's hard to follow. Um, if anyone like wanted me to recap it right now, I don't even think I could. Like, it's just so much has gone on. Um, so as as horrible as this sounds, because I shouldn't say this, but uh, like if this is your first stream, you should probably uh, try again another time with another game. But like if you want to just like throw yourself in, then go for it. Yep. Or if you played the game before yourself, I'm sure you could follow along. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. Whoa. Okay. I feel like we should be talking a little bit more about... Okay. So who's been peeping on her, on Classia? This is the bar barred door you tried to kick in before. Unbar the door. Leave. So what's on the other side? Unless we veered off into into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Classia about this route, see how she reacts. Folded M dimension, a reference to the popular science fiction series in system. Look who's in the in a good mood suddenly and read science fiction. Lightly punch the door. What if we had gotten this key before we came and spoke to Classia? We would just end up in her room and she'd be like, what the fuck, how did you get here? That would be an interesting interaction. As a writer, oh my god, don't. <laughs> Let's just go. I'd like to hear your views on this thing I read about Kim, that an amazing bit of work has been done to make Kim wildly more competent than you and so uh, able to guide you, but also totally believable as a sidekick and never occurs to the player that Kim would just take charge. Yeah, um, so I, I've been thinking about that a bit, like why does Kim just go along with it? So I feel like... Um, you're you're you feel weird now placed in this world but i feel like as the game goes on you you realize that uh maybe even it, with your crazed self that is quite extreme you're still not really that out of place like like kim has has his like weird sides too to him uh, and it kind of like you it warm the game warms you up to that idea uh but i feel like kim maybe and I like it, but I think Kim may be impossibly accommodating. Like, it's... It, it, or improbably accommodating. Like, I don't think someone as good as Kim would actually exist and, and go along with it as well as he does in this scenario. Um, maybe this is, someone comes out later that explains it, or something like that. I don't know. But, like, Kim, Kim is just, like, like, plot hole levels of just bro. So, like... And I like that, and it's, I guess it's an exceptional case where it's like, yeah, okay, like, we can go along with it, even though it doesn't make sense, uh, because it's worth it, but, um, yeah, I, I would, I would say that one of the most interesting things in this game is Kim, and how, and how Kim, uh, and how Kim functions, when it should be a flaw, but it's not, it's actually one of the game's best strengths. He has a halo on his portrait, he does have a halo on his portrait, that's true, one of the old style halos. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? I need to talk to you about your room again. I have quite a question for some drugs and that door there, point to it. Did you know it leads to a downstairs elevator? I did not. She takes a drag of her cigarette and smiles. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. There's a peephole on the other side looking into your bedroom. There were tracks on the floor. They're recent. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes. Looking into your bedroom, miss. The lieutenant points to her window. The unmade bed is visible through the glass. Okay. There's a pause as she processes this information. A jitter of fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? It could just be a coincidence. It could be connected. We don't know at this point. It could be just a coincidence. Okay, do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no, but if I were to guess long enough, the perforation is under the bookshelf under your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. If it is recent, who do you think made it? Shit, I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? There were tracks on the floor, they're recent. Huh, this isn't good. It's an old pinball workshop, the room back there. This place used to be a pinball arcade. Okay, she smiles. I'm glad someone's had fun. That's all for now. Mm-hmm. She flicks the ash from her cigarette absentmindedly. She's lost in thought, eyes narrowed, forehead furrowed. Mom's spaghetti. Okay. Also, because you're a pretty competent detective, despite your large loss. Yeah, that's true. Like we have, we have a storied history of um, solving a lot of cases. We've heard of Kim before, so it's not, uh, you know, so outrageous to think that maybe he's heard of us in passing. You know, he he knows that we're just in a in a bad situation. But I just, I just, I, I feel like we don't know enough about the world to know if this is normal. I feel like if this happened in any any 
where close to our reality, he would just be sent home and just be like, okay, come back when you're feeling better. Or he'd go on leave or he'd be investigated in some way. But instead they're just rolling with it because this is kind of weird world that, that we're living in. Um, and that Kim is probably stranger than we originally think. Hey, there's a curse. Can I help you? Gart saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing, great. Oh, there's Classia in room three. She snicked the phone line. Why? He stops himself. No, fuck it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. Yeah, I bet you didn't want it to be her. Well, anyway, mystery solved. I don't like loose ends. You have Lena. Lena is a good customer. Yeah, well, she's not a guest, is she? What? The one chimes in? Did someone mention my name? We were just paying you a compliment and finding out a degenerate from room three nicked the phone line. Everything is okay here, he yells and then turns to you. Good thing that guest pays for her stuff on time. I'll forward her, her the bill and be done with it. Was there anything else? Okay, well, I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to snitch her up, but I, I thought maybe you should fix the phone line? Uh, maybe we just did classic dirty. Fuck. Um, Gart, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, okay, well, he controls his excite he controls his excitement well. I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. It takes a lot of willpower not to ask. Obviously, he's been wanting to know what's behind the door. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Skeletons, a mausoleum of the dead, pinball machines, a pinball workshop, nothing. The black and gaping maw at the end of time, pinball machines. Ha, I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here too. I knew it, he repeats. Were there any back there in working order, I mean? Why, do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering. He appears to be making a calculation in his head. If you found pinball machines in there, he was wondering about something business related, about how much money he can make off one. Think of turning this place back into a pinball arcade. If you're thinking of selling those mach those pinball machines, I want a fat cut. See, sweet shit, beat your chest. I'm a distributor. <laughs> disruptor. No, I'm a disruptor. <laughs> he rolls his eyes. Those machines are rolling property, but if it makes you feel any better, I'm not planning to sell them. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here. Other than the hellish karaoke machine, that one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. Sounds like he cares about the, the place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that's part of the Doom commercial area. You should still know. You have you have to be forewarned about these things. I have to warn you. I may have discovered that Whirling is part of the Doom commercial area. What? He looks mildly startled. Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. So he knows of the Doom commercial area and its address. He's thought about this. Wait, so you know of the curse? The whirling is listed on the intercom outside as one of the businesses in Building B. You should get your wiring fixed. I tried to call and couldn't reach you. I've been working here for a long time and that intercom has never been used by the whirling. Hold on, not once? Isn't that already a sign of decline? <laughs> The Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade before it failed. It's only a matter of time before the Whirling fails too. The Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade which failed, though perhaps the Whirling will escape the curse. These are just the same thing. This is Fallout 4 tier bullshit. It's a sign of the Whirling and Rags not being part of the Doom commercial area. If anything, we're revitalizing this neighborhood. Relax, Mr. Gart. I'm sure there is no Doom. He simply wants to share his discoveries with you. Does this look like part of a Doom commercial air? He makes a sweeping gesture. This pre-revolutionary tile work, these high ceilings, the, the nice rooms, well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me if some doom ghost, he studies his voice. I thought he didn't really work here all that much. He's done a fine job too, though he's spoken of the place dismissively before. Yeah, the hostel is actually very important to him. You really care about the whirling, huh? Yeah, he sighs. It's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is part of the damn Doom commercial area. Aha, so you finally admit it. Yes, your police skills have, have delivered. I'm sure you'll you'll get a com commendation, maybe even a promotion. Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here, just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some mon money laundering might be involved. And who named it Whirling in Rags? It's kind of a cool name, actually, Whirling in Rags. Well, it sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. It was you. You look surprised? What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names, too. It's from a song. Hail Holy Queen by the Eternes. Eternes? Eternes? 
10 years. Hail, Holy Queen of the Sea, he quotes, you're whirling in rags, you're vast and you're sad. Good pick, Lieutenant nods. I agree. What about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them? He shrugs. One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nilsson and all those old ghosts. He's hesitating, not sure if you should share this inf- if he should share this information with you. Encourage him. And the others? The other is a kebab cart. It's very successful in its in its way, but it's nothing like the whirling. Well, good luck with you. <laughs> good luck to you with this place then. Too bad it's doomed. No, five. Luck has got nothing to do with it. He looks to where the hidden room is. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help against the doom, it's implied. So if you don't have anything else to tell me about my establishment, can or can about my establishment, or can we, you know, wrap it up? There's a peephole in the wall. He startles. What wall? Upstairs in the, in the secret back room, right next to the to Classia's bedroom. I found it when I found the pinball machines. I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the whirling does not abide spying on its guests. How about you fix our room, too? All right, you've been notified. Conclude. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Something else I want to talk about. Um, no, that's it. Goodbye. All right. So, do we get a skill up? We did. All right. So... Uh, did we go and, did we go and do the body? We didn't do the body, did we? We still have a perception chance to do the body, and it's our last chance. So, what's something that we need to, to level up? What's something that we, we want to do? Do we want to get a spare decor to try to do the cop thing again? Seems like it's, it's not, not a good idea. Like, it's not really worth it. I know what I need to do real quick. I need to go pee. I'll be right back. Wait, no. Really, why can I hear peeing if I turn up the stream? Nah, you're probably just hearing something from downstairs. There's no way you could hear me peeing from where from where this is. No way. Oh, it's from the game. The game sounds like it's peeing. Volition or we riot? Alright, have fun writing. Small church instances. There's no way to listen to tape without working tape player or a port reel at hand, but even just holding the tape makes me feel sad. All right, so we need to go to the pawn shop and get one of those things, and we can also inspect the the um, the body with perception. Okay, so I'm gonna save scum. I'm gonna go and save it, and if I don't if I don't get the perception check on the uh, the corpse, I'm gonna reload and I'm gonna try again once I get some get an item that boosts my perception because after trying all these times, I don't want to lose it. So if you, if you think I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a fucking redditor after that then then okay I'm fine with that I'm fine with that. There's several thoughts of good perception. Are there? I I mean like I don't know if we're gonna stumble one or one one way into them though. Like we only have four slots left. Uh, is there anything that's slowing our perception right now? We don't have anything that raises our perception, right? I don't think we do. Explore the new area first perception. Yeah, I'm sure there's probably something down there that we could get. I just, like, we're here, so let's do it real quick so we can save some time. If not, I'll just reload it. Yeah. I lied. I would I would never I would never have saved scum. Never. It was just it was just a build up suspense. I would never have done it. Your arm reaches out and your eyes close as if by their own volition. Ooh, and we didn't even level it up. It's dark all around. You feel you feel cold, slippery flesh first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. But first, I need to say thank you to people. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna blast through this. Here's Waifu Joe from uh, from Dragon Five Five Five. Um, God, I hope I hope there's someone new to the stream right now that's only been here for the past five minutes. God, I God, I hope there's someone brand new watches the videos, never seen a stream before, and is here. And this is the first thing they see in the first five minutes. God, I hope that's a thing right now. Second time I catch you live, second or third anime shit every time. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's ironic. I swear, I'm not a weeb. I just play one on Twitch. I swear. As a person living in Sweden, recycling bottles is very common to be expected of every household that buys aluminum cans uh, or aluminum cans or plastic bottles, with some with some even scrounging the city's trash cans for cans and bottles to recycle for money. So seeing this kind of system in the game is really cool. Do you have a special cultural thing that you do um, that you are amazed to see in a game? Uh, I don't think so, no. Uh, that We do do that. We, we do uh, recycle. Uh, fairly strictly here and um, it both both in Moncton and Toronto uh, I, I've seen people that go from uh, recycling bins and, and outside people's houses and like raid their uh, ra raid their recycling to to take to, to cash it in um, uh, I saw some guy doing that to ours once and since then I just like put it put it all in in one thing for him to take you know it's like here here you go if people are gonna do it here it's much easier um which is probably something we should have been doing anyway uh, but i don't think there's anything kind of cultural kind of thing that uh that we do that i've seen uh shown in a game huh 
Your arm reaches out and your eyes close as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh first through your fingertips and under the palm of your hand. We've been playing this game for months. His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips like a spider. Your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. But not that silent. Crawl up his nostrils. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers in his nose. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. Put your fingers in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it. This feels right. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus in the end of the mouth is slippery, delicate to touch. From the soft meat, teeth are budding, hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat and there in the back of his, of his mouth, above uh, above the belt of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished, no larger than uh, 0.4 centimeters in radius. The edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Say abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. Kim looks in. There's a pen in his hand. His notebook is open at the copy paper. Touch it with your finger gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there a tight tunnel of flesh opens up tissue damage wide enough for two fingers as you push both in you reach through his mouth right into his brain stem brain stem yes that's what this part is called feel around first the basal basal ganglia feels clumpy when entered here what entered here is torn apart his reptilian complex this man will never sleep again never wake oh man the reptilian brain rip your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's, it's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. Lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. R wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly, cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it. The tip of your finger, a bullet? Sharp serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. Oh no, <laughs> we got to fuck this out. <laughs> I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you, can you get to it? He searches his pockets or something. Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. The object that is in there stopped just short of the skull in the e in in encephalus? In in Encephalus. Encephalus, I'm guessing, because that's phallus. Encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. The lieutenant leans closer. Okay, can we, can we get, can I go back in and get it? I don't think so. Like, it's a red trick, cannot be retried. Like, I, I want to go and get interfacing stuff on, but, like, I feel like I want, I'm not going to be able to, to go away and, like, like, what if I can't get back into it? 83% is guaranteed. Alright, this is a big one. This calls for music. This calls for the Space Odyssey music. Here we go. We did it. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp like metal, with your face twisting from pain and concentration. All you need to do is just whisper, I got it. Slowly pull your fingers out. Whisper, I got it. Good, good. The fridge in the background buzzes with excitement. Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth like a glove as you pull as you pull out, sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. A bullet, the lieutenant puts a, a, a small bag marked evidence under it. Drop it in. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, Unknown caliber, rifled, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Can I have it? Keep it, Lieutenant, as a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. Lieutenant drops the bag in your bloody, bloody hand. It feels right. 
feels light. He turns to his notebook. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury four, oval entry wound with an abrasion collar, soft palate, back of the mouth, high velocity, temporary cavity and brain tissue, small exit wound on the occiput. Occiput. He underlies the injury forcefully. How does that sound? Excellent. This is because we played the board game. Sounds like heaven. Found a bullet. Sounds about right. Opinion. Fatal injury. God damn right. Click, click, goes the pen. And one last thing, we should amend injury three, ligament mark, new opinion, non-fatal, post-mortem treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Treatment? Treatment officer is an attempt to manipulate the body after death to hide the real cause uh, with a false with a false cause. In this case, okay, so I, I knew this already. Like, I knew already that the hanging was fake to cover something up. How did I know that? Did we have like some, some like leap in logic thought during the investigation and I just took that as gospel or, or was I wrong to think that? Like, like I, I, I thought that already. Treatment officer. He points to the mark encircling the corpse's neck. This injury here, the ligament mark, the fractured hyoid bone. It was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Dead dabba doop doop. <laughs> we just did some good police work and now we're dead dabba doop doop. You think so? Agreed. Agreed. He nods. I have my doubt I had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. What did they carry him carry him over, not march him? I thought there was no satisfying explanation. Okay, I think that's why. Alright. That's why we thought so. There have been other signs too. Small details. Everything is too neatly designed for us to assign probable cause here, as we did foolhardily. Well, no more. We almost fell for it, he thinks. Almost. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Both cage and wall. Maybe they just shot him while they hanged him. What? Who what, Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make find them just a little bit easier. Maybe they shot him while they hanged him. To put him out of his misery, he thinks it's possible. But does it, it does not explain all the other dubious things here. Lack of struggle, primarily. I may be intellectually... In, I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time, and this just smacks of treatment to me. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer, the real motivation, what really happened here? Okay, so um, I know that there's like, a, there's at least like five police detectives that watch the stream. Is treatment actually a, a proper, um, like, like murder investigation term? Because I really like that term. I've never heard of it before. That's a cool term, treatment. Or is it something for like, like this game or, or in fiction? One of you has to be a police detective, right? Probably watching this on your phone as, as you go from to the next crime scene. That's, that's such a cool term. I think I need to watch myself. Oh, he nods. You really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling Lab should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. What happens next? Proceed. We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my Kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. You'll be gone, which I do in the meanwhile. Meanwhile, work on the case, tend to personal matters, try not to do anything dangerous. An officer needs to back up in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing, he looks at you in the eye. Great work, detective. Aww. Aww. After you bag the corpse, Kim will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side, side tasks and even the main and even the main case, but it might be um, more difficult. Please. Plan his exit accordingly. Okay, so uh, it's it's six, so uh, we can wait until a little later. Uh, we can't go and see that guy at nine o'clock if Kim's gone. I feel like we should do this now. I think it's late enough now. All right, he takes out a takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Bag the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. Leave. All right, this took some while a while last time, right? All right, Kim's gone. You know what that means. Time to get crunked. Gart, give me a drink, and then I'm gonna drink this one. Let's go. <laughs> you sit on the wind-worn wooden planks of the bench. Your feet ache. Wait. Oh, you can just wait here. Get up. All right, time for a bit of art. Okay, so we can go and do the art. But don't we want Kim there to, to be around to, to, to see our masterpiece in creation? Oh, I have really outdone myself. Oh, this is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Okay, so we were wrong. We, I, I was wrong. We didn't talk to this guy last time. Uh, René, it's the little pleasures. 
लाइव दासती तो भी है इस तरह का ओह हेलो विसर हाउ माइट आई बी ऑफ असिस्टेंस ऑन दिस फाइन डे Oh, we did. It's just it's it's a different thing. Okay, looks delicious. Point the sandwich. Can I have a bite of that? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. He says and quickly adds, nothing personal. It's just a principle. The only one you have. The sandwich looks like a culinary wonder, well made and abundant in components. The author sure knew their craft. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one. You notice a brim of tomato peeking from below. And is that mayonnaise? It even has a watermark. Don't be a dick, Gaston. There's plenty for everyone. <laughs> Please, <laughs> can I just have a bite? Really, lost, sir. I wish I could help you, but I need a sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. Um, he's squirming, avoiding your gaze. In my age, you need to pay attention to these things. Please, friend, let's just share it. You're not hearing me, man. I need the sandwich. Number one. Fuck off. It's mine. He jerks away, immediately startled by his own reaction. Sorry, officer. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. It. I didn't mean it in a bad way. He continues cautiously, but the sandwich is mine. I'm not going to share it. Convince Gaston to relinquish the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> the residents come to the very far country he hides, but try to get a bite of his dear sandwich, and he get and he gets claws. You're a special kind of vermin, guess on. We haven't eaten in three days. You mentioned Jean Marie Billieu. Who is that? Oh, sweet Jean Jeanie. He gets a dreamy look in his eyes. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol, maybe the entire world. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. There's an almost imperceptibly small tremble in his voice. Let her rest in peace. So you both knew her. We knew her all right. His friendly face lights up. Lived in the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was sixteen. He looks at the car carabineer almost gently. They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal, ideal, than just be hap. And then you stole her from me. He jerks forward and then grabs his chest, grabs his chest and stops. Easy fellows. No need for this to get ugly. Do not intervene. Well, technically, you stole her from me just because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over her pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You, the tall veteran, looks at you and nods. No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth, thousandth, and the first time, especially when we have company, turns to you, officer. What happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage, peaceful. He smiles faintly. Rene and I were both by her bedside when she, he pauses, searching for the white word, died. He sharply fills the silence and adds, no use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back, will it now? Departed. His partner finishes the sentence and chuckles. Until the end, she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up make up her mind about anything what to have for breakfast favorite color or which which one of us to marry the look in his eyes is happy and distant she was always leaving one of us for the other but never long enough to actually get married nothing wrong with weighing your options first that's a bit odd heck he says with a chuckle technically we're both still engaged to her you always confused her couldn't let us be happy he says with heavy resentment seduced her with your fancy words and pastries oh man i really want the sandwich now He suddenly remembers you are still there. Falls silent, turns away. Thanks for sharing. That upon wants the sandwich. Tell me, what do you know about the dead man? Let me think. He looks at the clouds wistfully. I heard someone was hanged, but left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Come on, you must have heard something. I want to have. I want to be eating this sandwich when when Kim comes back, and I want Kim to look at me and be like, "Where did you get that delicious sandwich?" And then he and then I'll say. Do you want some? And he'll hesitate, and he he wants to say yes, but he doesn't also also you know doesn't want to doesn't doesn't he wants it but doesn't want to admit it, and then wordlessly just rip it in half and give it to him because Kim's such a bro. No, I'm sorry. I really would like to assist. He's ad smiling apologetically. You're a good guy, officer. I can see that. Then help him, you wimp. Reproach fills his eyes. You rub plenty of. Sh You rub plenty of shoulder with the gosh ga gouch caviar. Cavier? Cavier? Not caviar. Well, eh, in the union, someone must know something. He means caviar socialists. I wish I could, but I don't. I just don't know anything. His cheeks turn red. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Odd. He doesn't seem to be lying, but there's something off here. Sounds a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. He assures you. I'm not even any. Of course, he's holding back. 
The carabiner crosses his arms. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. No, it's sandwich. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, Rennie? His eyes are furious. I'm not anyone important in the union. I just know Everard. How do you know Everard? Everyone Martinez knows the Clare brothers, he says solemnly. I taught those these boys human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? The carabiner snaps at Gaston. You never witnessed history, only heard about it years later when it, or, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. There he stands, proud, rigid, and alone, like a, a crack, crackling, cracking marble statue. What a prick, the jolly man declares with a sigh. The officer was addressing me, not you, Capitan. Where were we? Where were we? What a joyous way of putting it. Are you a union member? Oh, his cheeks turn red again. In many ways, yes, like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. At Everett, Edgar, and the older De Bardeurs all know me. In many ways? Oh, yes, you're not actually a member. Not in the technical sense. His eyes fix on the bulls in the crater. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Everett keeps me on the payroll just for the little things. So that's what it was. Bef so that was what was before, him hiding something. He tries to make it look like he's a big deal in the union, and now the illusion is disintegrating before you and Rene's eyes. He doesn't know anything, because no one tells him anything. He's an outsider. The Everett brothers seem to look after everyone in this place. Hmm. 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 So it seems like... Everett's actions are good, where his his words are really bad, and you're not supposed to like him. Whereas Joyce's words are much better, but maybe her actions are bad. Hmm. Well, her actions are kind of non-existent. Hmm. I feel like there's two sides to this. Hmm. Of course, he's not a member. Of course, he's oh, he's not a member of anything. I knew that. He frowns. He's a weather weather wane. I thought it was weather vane. Turns to where the wind blows and point and tries to, to look important. Is it weather wane? I thought it was weather vane. Hmm. I hate the socialist rabble, he continues, but even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence, never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. Yeah, you dirty centrist. What are the little things you do for Everett? Writing work mostly. He smiles occasionally. He needs something written. I happen to have a way with words. People say, what kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers about Martinez and how things are and how they could be. Everett and I have these long talks where, ah, where he tells you his, his little, where he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ooh, I do little things for Everett myself. Nothing wrong with that. I do little things for Everett too. I feel terrible about it. That's just the way things work around here, he declares merrily. No reason to feel bad about it. Are you a caviar socialist? The old man starts laughing. I don't even consider myself a regular socialist. Politics is not really something I involve myself in, officer. Wait, how can you write those newspaper pieces if you're not political? Officer, I have a vivid imagination, he laughs again. And like I said, I have a way with words. That's enough. No need to sink in politics. He just fluffs it up. Of course, don't sink into anything. Don't sink into any fight. Only sink into your couch. So you are a weather vein. Ah, now it's weather vein. All right. Are we up to 40 mistakes yet? I prefer high, highly adaptable myself, he chuckles merrily. Has a better ring to it, don't you think? Mon Dieu, the carabineer closes his eyes like he's never going to open them again. Fucking all the German. That, thanks. That's all for now. I learned German in high school. Now, I, now I've, I've forgotten so much about it. All right. Uh, I want the sandwich. God damn it. A man so principled about a sandwich calls her a principled approach. Time to get political. What is political? This right here is political. Sandwiches aren't political. This city's going to shit. Sooner or later, some foreign anarchist is going to steal your sandwich. That's a fact. Your blood sandwich <laughs> is a tool for the oppressors designed to keep the pro proletariat docile. There's no ethical sandwich. Under under capitalism, no ethical consumption under capitalism. These options seem awfully fascist or communist. What if I don't want to say them? Say one of these fascist or communist things or fuck off. <laughs> Your blood sandwich. I'm not going to listen to this commie Conner Connery. He utters through clenched teeth and turns his back to you. Huh? The jolly man is scratching his head in bewilderment. He doesn't understand the situation. Let me ask you, comrade. Did you make the sandwich yourself? Look, comrade, the overabundance this sandwich embodies is inherently evil. <laughs> uh, I really don't understand how my sandwich could. He starts but falls silent. Wouldn't you rather have a proper sandwich, a sandwich with a soul? I don't either, but wouldn't you rather eat a sandwich free of the bourgeois guilt baggage? I would rather just have this one, officer. He's avoiding your eyes. It's really good. Tell this lost comrade what the people's sandwich would be like. This is still the essence of the working man in a sandwich. 
But imagine a sandwich, absolutely minimal in design, sleek, efficient, simple. But imagine a sandwich covered entirely in fine metal dust from an industrial plant. The skepticism emanating from the Mary Senior could be sensed all the way to the Seminine Islands. He's not imagining it. It visioned bread, as black as the soil it came from, melting butter, yellow like the sun shining on the backs of, the, of workers on the fields. Salt is essential. There can't be too much, because isn't proletariat the salt of society? Now turn upside down. Black bread, like a symbol, on top to salute the coal mines our heroes worked. I'm going butter. I don't eat worker food, he blurts out, immediately regretting it. Look, officer, I like different classic food. Fine dining, not worker backs. Please drop it. We need to get our rhetoric up. Do we want the sandwich? Are we just going to level rhetoric up right now and get the sandwich? Fuck it. Fuck it. I want the sandwich. I want the sandwich. We're doing it. I want the sandwich so bad. We're trying it's again. 58%. Like yeah. How may I eat the citizens? I want the sandwich. All right, this is how we're going to do it. I admire your handiwork, chef, but few things I'd do differently. Like what, officer? His eyes rest on sandwich. This is as good as they come in Revishal, I assure you. And we just spelt the we just spent the skill point on a sandwich. An array of delicious recipes flashes through your mind. Salad, salmon, sandwiches, bingo. The bread you built this wonder on could have been toasted beforehand. Had you put a large slice of old Duvian Vian cheese crosswise from the ham, it would minimize the component loss via crumbling. Mon Dieu, that is an excellent idea, he exclaims. That would virtually negate the component loss. I'll do you one better. The air pocket between cheese and ham could house pre-roasted paprika. Cesare de la Sue, he shouts excitedly. Can you make the sandwich, officer? Sure, but I'm going to need yours as a prototype first. <laughs> No, no one can! Gaze at the distance, slowly shaking your head. <laughs> I, want, I want one because then we get the sandwich, but two is just the best! Two. Two. Oh, we don't get the sandwich. Wait, but I thought the old time visually disappointed pockets of sandwich in size. I'd really like to get back to the game now if there's anything else. God damn it. We just, we're hungry for our art. Hungry for our art. God damn it. Was that worth a skill point? Oh my god. I slide one, use 666 bits. Ooh. The devil's bits. In the first stream, in the first chat, when the emotes first lengthened, one stood, burned by the embers of Ayayageddon, his soul blistered by the monocoins and tainted beyond ascension, he chose the path of perpetual torment. In his ravenous hatred with boiling blood, he scoured the Discord channel, seeking vengeance against the weeb lords who had wronged him. He wore the crown of the Claw Fisters, and those that tasted the bite of his donations named him the Ayaya Slayer. <laughs> That was great. That calls for... There you go. Couple ayayas for that. Thank you, Ice Lad. That was really good. That was great. And thank you, Zorgrox, for the 100 bits. Now you can't share the sandwich with Kim. I know, right? Should we reload for the sandwich? I don't know. I think the line was worth it. I want to buy that boombox. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, where, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. The boombox I bought. It should play this tape, right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. Alright. This is the reel-to-reel -reel boombox of everyone's youth. A little banged up, a little chipped, and honestly not that loud either. It looks cool though. Excels at being carried on the shoulder, allowing you to play audio tape items and blast music into the face of unsuspecting strange- Wait, what? Oh my god. This is fucking disco. The porter reel is, is just what you needed. Okay, press play on the tape. You press the large button marked Commencer, and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Press your ear against the speakers. Keep the porter reel at the harmless distance and wait. Now, press your ear against the speakers. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple mel melancholic tune, echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in. Telling you about the tiniest church in St. Sands, surrounded by an even, ti by even tinier yard. 
think it's a mistake. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's a mega sad. Within seconds, you know this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trashed your room to. This one tells it like it is. This is your tune. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Could I sing this for karaoke? I think I could sing this. No, I couldn't. It's too sad. I might cry and trash your room again. Scratch that. I'm already crying. And I look dumb and old. Can I sing this for karaoke? Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. Yep, they're all here. All three verses. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands in your way now. What? Gart. You have to convince Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. Remove the tape. Immediately, the boombox tunes itself back to the Friday night beats vibrating on his shoulder. Okay, well, there's no way in hell that we're doing that without Kim. No way. No way in hell. Alright, let's look at the bullet. The bullet mushroomed out on impact. Now it looks more like a fanciful jacket button than something that could pierce skin, flesh, and bone. The bullet safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny shriveled head of cauliflower. Ah, that's a great description. What do I do with you, bullet? The squished little thing has no idea. I know. You should find the gun that shot this bullet. Eat- <laughs> Eat it? <laughs> what? Kim comes back? Where's the bullet? I ate it. <laughs> no. It's my friend. I'm going to start talking to it. It'll keep me coming. Now, we're, we're trying to, We're not going insane all that much. Find the gun that shot it. That sounds like something a police detective would do. First, you should learn all you can about this little guy. Then find the gun that shot it. Okay. Find, feel the bullet through the bag. The squash bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizens militia use, uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the mu from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. What? Inspect the bullet closer. The jacket of the bullet is made of yellowish metal. It is blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few striations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear, it feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. Far away, Lieutenant Kitsuragi is flipping through stations in his kinema. He is not here examining the bullet with you. He should be. He would find this very intriguing. Mention it to him later when he's here. <sighs> Sorry, Kim. Okay, so I kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to be real with you guys. I kind of don't want to do much right now in the game because Kim isn't here and I like having best boy with me. So like, maybe there's some exploration we can do in, in the new area. I don't know. Anton69 used some bits to say, how would you tell Bill that you ate the bullet? Post a bulletin. Kim would come back and say, what happened to the bullet? And we would say, I ate her. Oh, by the way, here's, here's the dad jokes. Dad joke calendar. We didn't do yesterday's and we didn't do today's yet. Dad joke calendar. Why did the janitor take early retirement? Because he realized grime doesn't pay. And today's, the sexiest people tend to be runners. They're quite attractive. Speak to class about your room. Yeah, we could do that, yeah. Okay, we went around here before. Is there anything new to do in the car? I don't, there could be anything down here that might have some good Kim moments, right? It's it's seven uh, through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and their forgotten chair. <gasps> you see a dark red chair in the dim dim light in the room. I love that we just have this music everywhere we go now. Postcard, Cold City 08. A bow tie. What? drama instead two drama oh man we're gonna be hearing sire a lot cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak reading books are talking to lena about bigfoot uh so we can go and talk to we can go talk to joyce about our badge right i think someone in chat just said that too we can go do that and we can talk to lena then we can go and talk to um to, to class yeah and maybe then we'll read a book and that'll get us through the day let's do that because i don't want to explore without kim kim is the whole game to me necktie dialogue what that tie is adorned with a gar gar garish pattern. It's disturbingly vivid. Somehow you feel as if it would be wrong to ever take it off. It's your friend now. You'll betray it if you ever change it for some boring scarf. 
What if I just took it off completely? Hmm. Ralph loves using bits. Why should you never take a platypus to dinner? You'll get a massive bill. How are the kids? They're okay. Is uh, Finn still kicking ass at Yoshi's Island? No. They <laughs> we were on the couch earlier. And he sang to Leo. Leo, you jump on me! And they were jumping on each other. And I thought, oh my god, what the, like, where's the blood gonna come from? Yeah. But they were okay. Oh, they were okay? Alright. That was their game for like the first part of your stream. Thank you for the water. No. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Show her your badge. I found my badge, by the way. By love, you did. She inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant Double Yefrider Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. <laughs> it smells of fish. What can I do? What can I help you with, Lieutenant Yefrider? How about you share your information on the lynching now that you've seen my badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have to have informed my employer there will be a probe. I will. I cannot rescind that promise. She smiles apologetically. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when, when you finish with them. That was This was your plan all along. She shakes her head vigorously. My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end, which I hope you will, because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. See, again, I forgot that she has to do this. So she has to do this. She's basically did the exact same thing that Everett did. It's just that she's a lot nicer and, and is a lot more convincing about it. So, like, like, I don't know. Like, they both have different kind of... Um, uh, like conversation techniques, I guess there's probably a word for it that I'm not that I'm not thinking of. So like, like right now, I really like Joyce. Like I like Joyce way more than Everard, but maybe Joyce is evil and Everard isn't. I don't know. Meaning the information she has will raise the stakes in this game. Because it's a game. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. She takes a sip of tea. Now, is there anything I can do for you in the meanwhile? Tea, perhaps? I spoke... Oh, I'll have some tea. Go with my sandwich. If I had one, I spoke with the lorry men at the roundabout. Word has traveled, yes, but nothing of real substance has surfaced yet, I gather. She smiles and explains, while Pines has eyes in, on the intersection, but not ears. One of the tall buildings overlooked the roundabout. It would give them a read on the entire quarter. Tell me about this drug traffic again. We already have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. The two might even be connected. Actually, let's discuss something else. Okay, we don't have any questions about reality. Okay, I wish I knew what had some... No, I guess we're done. All right, I don't want to go through all of it. All right, so let's go talk to Lena and talk to... Um, what you would call it? Uh, Classia. Check out my boombox. Oh, there you are again. I'd really like to hear about more cryptids. Of course, dear. What's the biggest cryptid? I thought we'd agree on just one cryptid, sweetie. Huh? But, 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 this is so much more interesting than my real job. Your work must get quite frustrating. Well, okay, just one or two more. She smiles mischievously. The biggest cryptid is, of course, the giant of Noko Nur. It's huge. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Noko Nur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Wait, what do you mean, odd light? A mirage, or psychogenus genus? Luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon, expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of Coco Nur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others a fate unimaginable. That's what makes it so peculiar, a species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Coco Nur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see. To how large a metabolism, uh, to, uh, to how large a metabolism and ecosystem can beget. Hmm. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Coco Nur Desert might allow the creatures creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Gravity anomaly? Digging it, digging this parascientific stuff right here. Yeah, me too. What's the tiniest cryptid? Cryobacter catlenesis. Cryobacter calenesis, yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Katla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Ka Caitlin 
Mijano some seven years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijano found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate, certainly from before recorded history. Mil oh my god, Mijano disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study, no doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Wait, she injected herself with it? Yes, the bacteria had survived in the ice since time times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. Really? You mean there is an immortal geologist wandering the world? Yes, and she's quite mad too. After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but she almost, but also became increasingly ex eccentric and irascible. Irascible. I hope I'm saying that right. And so that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. Irascible. Okay, I have never heard that word before. Like irritable. Irascible. Having or showing a tendency to be easily angered, yeah. So, so kind of like a like a, a worse irritable, I guess, irascible. That's cool. I like it. I like that word. Uh, so even her old friends, were, oldest friends, were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now, all alone, except for the Cryobacter K Mario coursing through her bloodstream. Are there any invisible cryptids? What's an interesting question? And the answer is yes, there are. What's that? The call do mama dakua la la li le lo, or thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it seems to be. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. It's very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. Call do mama daka can also be translated to a whisper light and low. A whisper light and low. Her eyes light up behind her glasses. Yes, that's another translation. They're both quite lovely, aren't they? Although the low part is a little ironic. The call do mama dakua makes it or makes or rather is such a high pitched sound that other animals, including humans, can't hear it. It could be everywhere all the time and we wouldn't know. How can an animal be a sound? Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpse corpsicle that emits sound waves, but here but here's no evidence. Here's there's no evidence to support this theory. Could it be here? Look around right now. It could be, she says calmly. As I said, it could be everywhere, and we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. What evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of areopagite ornithologists ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the EA, e oh man, mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Mm -hmm, songbirds. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding, mating, and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls. They realized they had discovered a new species. They called it the Call do Mama Dakua, after the Paracarnassian name for the voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Wow. Mm -hmm. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds, even though they couldn't see them. They could distinguish among individual birds, and she smiles, even began to name some of them. Name them? Sequester, Thyme, or Time. Josquin, she nods. Those are all but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. Why is the Mamadakwa so afraid of us? That is a sad story, she frowns. A group of university students assisting in the field work and their enthusiasm for the project and the doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors nearly drove it to extinction. Extinction? She nods gravely. They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound, so they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mamadakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave is the same frequency, dear. Psst, they cancel each other out. They cancel each other out. Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that... When they happen upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. Great regret washes over her. A wending cloth. After that, the corpsicles appeared to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in EA, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable call do ma ma population anywhere. Interesting. What about... Hmm. Alright, that was kind of interesting. Alright, cool. Alright. So, what's it going to take to do karaoke? Can I help you? Gar, I need to sing karaoke. Now, let's, just in case, let's do it later. This is going to be a skill check, though, for sure. Wait, can we take the drugs now that now that Kim isn't here? Search for the prep site again. Oh, you, can, you can just take it. No, 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 no. Kim wouldn't want it. Kim wouldn't want that. What would Kim do? 
Lobsters don't age. Let's inject ourselves with lobster so as to achieve eternal life. Yusuke and I are way ahead of you. I was just thinking what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. Murder. All right, so we can we can uh, unlock the level of volition to try this, but Kim's not here, so we're not going to do it. Now that Kim isn't here, let's talk about Sunday night. Ah, uh, yeah, she pours herself some more coffee. The night before, I saw you in the hallway and reminded you you're a police officer. The date of your reentry, the date of your reentry into the fossil record. Yes, before I emerged like a Paleolithic megafauna. It's one of the first things I remember doing in Elysium. Before you was only the room, the sound of the motor vehicle, steam in the bathroom, and darkness. Wow, she nods. My mytho poetically adequate stuff. Did you hear something Sunday night from my room? Move on. There was the usual ruckus, she nods. Loud disco music. Did I have any visitors? I can't say. Probably not. Sounded like you were flying solo. You mentioned loud disco music? Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. She arches her eyebrow, waiting for, you to, for it to connect with you. Is that like the name of a band? Or is that just like... Oh, that. Yeah. Woo. The less said about oh, oh the best. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, we're huge. Oh, oh, we're huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course, like seven. Life gets hard, she says, half singing, but we go on. Don't ask questions. Then doesn't life get hard because we go on? Yeah, we go on, all right. It mostly just gets hard, doesn't it? Maybe we should stop going on then. Doesn't the going on cause the getting harder part? Yeah, we go on, all right. I don't know about that. Around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time... Some of that time you were yelling along to it. What was I saying? Was I seeing this? Show her the tape of the smallest church in St. Cianne's. Yes, there was a church in there, a really small church, like the smallest, saddest church on the whole in the whole world. It was about that. And also, what else? That it doesn't matter anymore, and that we are all alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. I'm sorry. Don't be. <laughs> this... <laughs> Or, and yeah, disco dancer, don't be, I was going out later anyway, it didn't bother me. Then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. Are you sure I wasn't being assaulted? No, it didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing the room. She takes a sip of her coffee and smiles. A window was smashed, the tape player properly, the song stopped, the f and furniture too. A real destructothon. There was screaming. Then I think you passed out. Was there anything else? There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable i went after i went out afterwards everything was quiet by then around four or five she nods and that was it thank you no problem sir she feeds herself another cigarette hmm. all right oh damn we have two skill points two skill points okay so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna um call on chat right now uh is there any of these that are worth getting please if you only if you've played the game are there any of these that you know, just a little nudge for old Joe here. Um, any, like, yeah, that's really good, you should get it, or just wait to have a different thought later. Bow Collector. Two people say Bow Collector, one says Socioeconomics. Bow Collector, if you like the supernatural. Bow Collector plus three sh shivers. Hell on Earth. Okay, let's go for it then. Let's, go, let's get the Bow Collector. Advanced race theory. Oh, someone wants me to get banned from Twitch. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Go to our room and just um, read the books? What do you think about the pale? It's interesting. I don't really understand it, though. Okay, so is there anything else before we settle in for the night? Also, should we sleep under the boat? <laughs> you could try the check with uh, Classy again. I could, but I want Kim to be here for that. You could also bathe in your room. Yeah, I want, I, we're supposed to, oh, we can. Oh, cool, we can just do this now. All right. It's not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Uh, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. Run yourself a bath. I want to live forever with the court smell. Run yourself a bath. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons, undress, close your eyes, and submerge. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks like sad duckies. Take the beer cans out, nice money. Now that you are alone with your thoughts in the tub, uh, but it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. Linger in the tub a little. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whorls 
as the water cools, imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street, a video rental, darkness on the planet's curvature. Get out. Conclude. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. Upgrade volition. Talk to Clash afterwards. I want to, but Kim's not here. All right, let's read the book. This postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue cloudless sky. The tinge of age, the color of old teeth, gives it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out. I got out. No addressee. Dick Mullen. Another Dick Mullen book woefully misrepresenting the police work. In this one, our detective returns from a trip, having successfully solved the 100-year-old cold case, only to embark on another. Does he finally face the taxing nature of his occupation? No, he doesn't even look like a normal police, a normal law officer. All right. In your hand, you hold Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. The brittle paperback feels fragile to the touch, but not that fragile. Examine the cover. The cover features a pastiche of different scenes. In the foreground, a man in, the, in, the dark, in a dark overcoat clutches a pistol to his chest. Rising up behind him are two silhouettes wrapped in a passionate embrace. The tagline reads, Detective Dick Mullen must prove his innocence after an old friend is murdered by someone who looks just like Dick Mullen. That seems to sum up the premise nicely. Needless to say, it violates nearly every RCM regulation for a detective to investigate a murder in which he is a suspect. Start reading. The story opens with a knock on the door. At the door, Detective Dick Mullen is greeted by an old friend, Charlie Spillane, Charlie Spillane, who's come to Mullen to ask a favor on this dark and cold night. Spillane needs Mullen to drive him in from Vesper to a small town along the Insulidian coast. Despite his friend's apparent agitation, Mullen does as he, does as he's asked, then returns home where he passes out drunk, as he does most nights. An extremely unprofessional and hurtful stereotype that's offensive to all upstanding officers of the law. Look, I can't judge. Two days later, Mullen is arrested by the Vesper police and charged with the murder of Charlie Spillane. At his interrogation, Mullen learns that Charlie Spillane was shot at in a bar in the very town Mullen dropped him off in by a man matching, matching Mullen's description. Desperate to clear his name, Mullen manages to convince the Vesper police to release him for three days so that Mullen may solve his friend's murder and prove his innocence. The cops release their prime murder suspect so he can find the real killer. Are you shitting me? They're not shitting you, detective. This is what the writers think passes for a police procedure. Of course, Mullen didn't do it. That's the whole premise of the book. Anyway, Mullen returns to the seaside bar where Spillane was murdered and meets a beautiful, mysterious woman named Diana De Devere. Denevere? 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 Mario? Nice. A dame. Now it's getting interesting. Nice. A dame. <laughs> and not just any dame. She's truly one in a million. A knockout whose mind is as dangerous as her curves. But she's got a secret. Man, who doesn't? Secrets are the currency of human relations. Your secrets are unknown even unto you. So does that make you a rich man or a beggar? Now it's getting interesting. Denove? 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 Mario? Denove reveals that she was Spillane's lover and that he was mixed up in a local amphib amphetamine smuggling operation. As soon as Mullen begins pulling the strings, the whole conspiracy begins to unravel. Not only is a local police captain in on the amphetamine ring, so is the son of a powerful politician and a strung-out art collector named Torvald, each of whom has his own reasons for wanting Spillane dead. Tell me about the police ca police, ca police captain. Outwardly, the old police captain is a real law and order crypto fascist, a barrel chested man who's beaten his share of suspects to pulp, but he's also dirty and increasingly paranoid that someone's going to expose his whole, his role in the in the drug ring. He would certainly have the the motive and the means, but the captain walks with a noticeable limp from an old war injury. Is it possible he was able to conceal it long enough to commit the murder? I want to hear about the politician's son, a typical privileged twat. He, in all likelihood, he's just in over his head. I hate that some Americans call that, say that twat. It's twat. It's not twat. Where are you getting twat from? It's twat. Fucking hell. He does bear a personal. He does bear a personal grudge against Spilling, though a former prosecutor who nearly brought down his father's administration. The kid doesn't exactly have Dick Mullen's manly build, but he is the correct height. And while interrogating him at his home, Mullen did notice a certain overcoat that looked suspiciously like his own. What was that about an art collector? Torvald, the art collector, is a strung out mess. Frankly, it's hard to imagine him holding a pistol steady enough to actually hit someone, let alone plug them three times in the chest. The old the, the way old Spillane got did. That said, Torvald and Spillane have a long history, and while interrogating him, Mullen discovers that Torvald was once involved with De De Diana Denove. Could it be this is all over? A, s 
This is all over a sordid love triangle. Okay, let's get on with the story. One evening, Deanna De Denove comes to Mullen's ho hostel, hostel room in tears. The two of them drink half a bottle of vodka, and soon they're seeking comfort in each other's arms. Well, that testimony won't, won't be admissible any longer. How does Mullen expect to solve the murder if he's sleeping with the witness? Nice, get it, Mullen. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm happy with this, but maybe the story will turn around. <laughs> As the two lovers share a post-coital cigarette, Deanna Denove turns to Mullen and says, By the way, Dick, there's something else I meant to tell you. Where, whatever it is, Mullen never hears the words. A blow to the base of his skull knocks him out, knocks him out cold instantly. Fuck. Can't trust the dame. Shake your head. Who can you trust in this wicked, messed up world? Your partner, your partner. Kim will be there for me. Yep. Yep. Will you be there for him, though? When push comes to shove, time will tell. In the meantime, let's get on with the story. When Mullen comes to, Denove is dead on the hostel bed next to him. To make matters worse, his clothes are covered with her blood. Double fuck. Mullen trashes, trashes his bloodstained clothes and flees the hostel, knowing it's only a matter of hours before the cops discover Denove's body if they haven't been tipped off already. Fleeing a crime scene, destroying evidence. Even if Detective Mullen didn't commit the murder, he should be facing years behind bars. But she's not dead. The heat is on. If Dick Mullen can't solve both murders before the cops catch up to him, he's going away for life. Can you solve the case before the cops close in? Wait, I've got some questions first. What is it, Detective? Why does everyone close to Dick Mullen wind up dead? It's, da it's a dangerous line of work, but somebody has to do it. That's why Dick Mullen never lets anyone get too close. Why did Dick Mullen become a detective in the first place? There was never a time when he wasn't a detective. He was born a detective. Was I not born a detective? For a moment, you cease to read the story on the page and see the book for what it is, a collection of brittle, cheaply printed pages held together by glue made from the hooves of horses. You won't find the answers you're looking for here, in other words. Why bother solving crimes when the world is so evil? Is it really so evil, Detective? Okay, maybe not. There are parts worth saving. Like what? Fr the pleasure of contemplating art. You don't know how you know, but you can feel this book laughing at you. Art? You think contemplating art is going to save you? Yeah, I do. I'm the goddamn art cop after all. Whatever you say, art cop, the book has stopped laughing, but you can feel it grinning smugly at you. Hey, fuck you, book. Give the book the finger. You know... You look like a madman, right? Giving an, an, an inanimate object a finger like that. I don't have any more questions. I figured it all out. So who did it, detective? Who killed Charlie Spillane and, and Deanna Denove? Loved in the men. The dirty police captain. The junkie art collector. The politician's twat son. Uh, Dick Millen? You know what? I think it's the, the politician's twat son. <laughs> Could be, who knows? Only one way to find out. Finish the book. You begin furiously flipping through pages. Even as you know that those these books follow a series of well-worn tropes, you find yourself completed complete completed engrossed. Completely engrossed. You're turning pages so fast you don't even notice the ancient spine coming unglued. You try to grab the pages as they come loose, but your fingers aren't quick enough. They're gone. Oh no! No! Dozens of pages scatter across the floor. The last fifth or so of the book seems to have been lost. It's possible you could gather and reassemble the pages, but it would take way too long. Stupid old horse glue. Yes, blame a dead horse for your fat, clumsy fingers. In your hand, you hold four fifths of Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. No, really? No! Um. I'm so upset. Who did it? Dude, pick up the pages! Fuck this, I'm gonna go sleep under the boat. Wait, can we pick up the pages? No? God damn it. If I had known, I would have I would have put my reaction speed gloves on. No, not my reaction speed gloves. My reaction speed orange bum hat. I would have put my bum hat on. God damn it. I don't think it was due to a fail check. It was a fail check. It was, yeah. I don't know what it helped. Really? <laughs> Is it? Is there a ringing? There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. Ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high-pitched, right? It's like something tickles your ear. Lena also said that it couldn't be heard by any other animal, including humans. What you're hearing might just be a must be a regular bird. Honestly, your ear isn't hearing a whole lot. The distance hum of the industrial harbor, the traffic. But admittedly, there is a high-pitched noise somewhere there, too. But then, isn't there always? Listen closely first. There it is again. You are about to rediscover a long-lost species. Keep listening. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come to you. Move your head toward the sound. Oh no, the sound. It's moving away somewhere over there. Go after it. No, too late. It's gone. 
There is no ringing anymore, just the sound of the streets. No, come back, please, listen more. Keep your eyes, your ears peeled then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you're sure to hear it again. You heard it, the mysterious call do mama de, de cua. You're certain that you did. Well, maybe not quite certain, but let's say you're hopeful because it would make you very special to be the only human being who can hear this invisible and corporeal incorporeal bird this inan this animate whisper this particle of sound you're going to have to keep listening sharpen your ear hey yo hey Vilf, how's it going balcony guy what balcony guy what balcony guy i don't see anyone on the balcony oh balcony guy not caught but kim's not here do we want to do it without kim i think we just want to go to sleep we're gonna waste some time, but you know, oh well. We're gonna miss him. Like, can we go tomorrow at nine with Kim? I'm just gonna go to sleep. I checked the book check. It requires a roll of 20. It's literally impossible unless you have at least nine reactions. What are you talking about? Double sixes. Double sixes. One in 36 chance. Wait, we can't sleep under the boat. Oh. Passive, check, passive checks don't count for you can't roll double sixes on them? Okay. Are you sure? Go further towards the village. Not without my Kim. We're gonna go talk to the to the smoking guy, not to waste some time. We'll do that without Kim. How are we enjoying the beatbox? You know, someone should mod in that whenever you have the beatbox on, it does a yeah yeah. But you can sleep there, my dear. It won't let us. I can't even interact with it. Actually, you should meet the smoking balcony guy with Kim. Okay, we're just gonna go to sleep. We're just gonna go to sleep. We're gonna go to sleep. Paint our masterpiece. Explore with Kim. We're just gonna go to sleep. I've had enough. We're just going to sleep. It's our last. It's our last twenty. We need some money. Zia Block is under to say, "Hey Joe, remember that one time you destroyed a part-time student worker by making them prepare ninety-nine pieces of jam-filled bread?" <laughs> I'd do it again too. I'd do it again too. Can I help you? I put my bill for tonight. Good. Got him for right. All right. Goodbye. Let's go sleep. I think that was just updating that our money's gone. 99 jam bread was an unironically a great choice. Wait, why can't we just sleep in Kim's room? Wait. Wait a minute. Go to sleep. It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feels like weeks of work on the case. You have to try after what feels like hours. You feel like you feel you might be sleeping. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on the ferret tape. Spinning in eternity. On and on it goes for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth, the potted flowers, the faces turning, changing. The pages just out of reach, never knowing the end of the book. It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. 
colors, the voices, the rain, the snow. I don't want to. It's beautiful. The endless visions erase them. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop. Whirling. Spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right, I am an agent of the world, but what if I want to be an agent of nothing? <laughs> it's too late. You're not made of nothing anymore. You're something now, Harry. I tried to drown you in the black water, but you re-emerged. Kicking and screaming. Running. And for what? Solving your little crossword puzzle, doing your tasks, crossing names off your lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Not creepy. Feel the pillow under your cheek. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world one conversation at a time. Open your eyes. How much hot water have we wasted? Okay, so apparently we have a vote to do. The die has been cast. Who is Joseph Anderson's best boy? Kim Kitsuru Kitsuragi, Yusuke Kitagawa, Pickle Nagito, Papyrus and Sands, or Kratos stock recording of boy? Boy. Which one? Which one? I think Kim is taking it from recency recency bias. I agree, Asphalt. Kim has won. Kim has won. Carl has won. Kim has won. It's not recency. He's a god. <laughs> There's your best boy. He's right there. Let's go see him. He's downstairs waiting for us. They're waiting for you, Freeman. In the test chamber. Isn't this door connected to Kim's room? I can't comprehend how Yusuke has grown from worst boy go to the bench. Yusuke, how dare you move in with me into best boy pulp? Because like Yusuke is just a really bad introduction. <gasps> Kim's back. Guess who's back? Yes. Kim, you you like we gonna talk about um the bullet? I almost got a sandwich. I almost ate the bullet. I found a bow tie. Um, I read a book and I and I couldn't. I fucked up reading a book. Uh, I'll talk about you. What if we, like, use the bullet in front of him? Can't take a look at this. It's a jacketed bullet close to a 5mm in diameter. A jacketed bullet, okay, it would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, if not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revachal haven't carried breech-loading weapons for like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary unjacketed conical bullets this is strange very strange i like this officer strange means unique unique means incriminating we need to find the gun that shot it oh shit what i already have it what if i already have it something tells you it won't be anytime soon this will have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while okay cool all right um okay there's nothing sadder than karaoke in the morning right but let's see what the check is can i help you guard i need to sing karaoke now no you don't it's not happening you need to approach the situation logically Ask him why he has the PA system installed if you can't if you can't use it. Yeah, but look him in the eye. Johnny Law is about to tear it up sad stuff. <laughs> 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 
why do you even have a UMP system and no one's going to use it? It's part of my quest to self-discovery. Help, help me. This is my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. Number one, the whirling doesn't need more sad style. That's one of the styles it can do without right now. Why do you even have a PA system and no one's going to use it? It's for it's for that he begins confidently, but then stumbles on his own words. It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? A lot of, of people got killed because some asshole wanted to sing karaoke. What? It's not a prop. It's for your clients. I know it's used. Okay, yes, it's for some clients, he remits reluctantly. I'm a real client. I paid my bills, and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha, well, he comes up with a counter a card argument. We don't have any tapes, they all got stolen. He's lying, but whatever, you don't really need his lamb tracks. It's alright, I have my own song with me. Give him the tape for the smallest church in St. Sands. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown hard. Fine, fine, climb on the stage and do your thing. Just get out my hair. He shakes the tape at you. I'll plug it in for you, damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh yeah, time to, time to do the damage. Alright. All right, do we do it now? There's nothing sadder than karaoke at 7:30 in the morning. All right, come on. Like we come, we come by later when it when the room is packed and pumping. Right, everyone's here. We do do it at like seven or eight o'clock at night. All right. Apparently, I missed something about the bullet. Hand-eye coordination, legendary. Try to determine what kind of weapon shot this. Uh, 50 percent. All right. Do we have um, any hand-eye coordination clothes we can put on? Hand-eye, hand-eye. Any hand-eye. Debuffs? No. Okay. 72%. Yeah. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Bell Mar Margrave rifle. A Revocalian manufacturer, the BM dominated the battlefields in the of the Insulidian theater of the Ancentennial Revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you, the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly, but if if it were, the bullet if it were the Hmm. The bullet would probably fit in the chamber. Is anyone still making these rifles? No, but Ziegliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war, so there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Bell Margrave rifles these days? Antiques, antique. Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. That's a cool uh, detail. Hmm, Lieutenant jots something down in his notebook. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from. Dangle the bag thoughtfully. Okay, and the shot probably came from a Bell Margrave rifle, an antique that makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez Martin Martin or anyone in Revachal, really. Why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking, but the laws prohibiting the use of breech loaders were in we inherited from the monarchy have been effective from what I've seen. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement to front loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International and all the nations of the Real Belt. Worth what? Getting shot? I think we should have more powerful guns. We're the law. It makes you consider every shot. I like it. Worth what? Getting shot? Imagine if everyone cop citizens had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on. Come much easier. But back to the investigation. Seems like we're looking for an antiques enthusiast. Could be the victim of a mix of blah, 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 blah. Uh, antiques enthusiast. Doesn't seem that likely, but we'll check out the possible leads. Okay, can we do a different one instead? Gorilla, Jamrock Bangers. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I really want to explore the new area, but we just keep getting sidetracked. Like, we can we level up our volition? No, not yet. Like, isn't can't we tell you that it was wrong? The clowns are still hanging around. See? What is it now? We can, Do we really want to tell them this yet? I, I want to explore. I want to explore. We'll come back. Let's hold, let's hold this for now. We don't need to report to everybody. Paint the wall! Oh my god! Oh my god! What am I even doing? What am I even doing? We need to go paint the wall. Oh my god. Sorry. A thousand pardons. Holy shit. Holy shit. What am I even doing? Paintbrush. Check. Heavy fuel oil. Check. Now the only thing left to do is paint the wall. Fuck the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
the paintbrush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. Fuck the police. Mother of all walls. What shadow lies there beneath the bright gleam? Draw a 3,500-year-old pictogram of a human being. Something beautiful is going to happen. No parking. What? Okay, four is the most art cop, right? Okay, when something beautiful is going to happen, does that mean he's going to paint something beautiful is going to happen, or is he going to paint something beautiful? I think four is the most art cop. Is that Inland Empire? You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat will now silently really, silently repeats the message hmm. for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint adding another layer of detritus detritus to the city very poetic lieutenant nods in appreciation it doesn't sound sincere real poetry should we return to our murder investigation i hear there's a really bad one we're supposed to solve oh man what if we had done fuck the police hey check out my art hello again officers have you come to admire my mural so you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffito? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs around here, though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants to be something true. She wants to be something true in total. Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire can break up the, te to break up the tedium. Alright, let's just go. We left our mark on this world. Karaoke. Too early for karaoke. Uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. This looks like it's gonna be a fight. All right, hold on, hold on. Get on my crowbar. Um, what else? This looks like a fight. Um, physical instrument. Hand-eye coordination. Composure. All right. That's one brutal motor carriage. <laughs> what? Oh, all right. So he's from Witcher Three. He's he's a foglet. He's a piss foglet. That's one brutal motor carriage, says the young man with the piss foglet written on his back. If I were a real skull right now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan: "Fuck the world." Snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now. Skulls. Now, there's a strong organizational title. Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches or skulls. Said He said foglets. Foglets. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and On the contrary, the part of the presentation you want to take Foglet, the gotta you, be. Cop, man, is we're not part of the skulls yet okay then okay then let's indulge in some intellectual exchange these young men seem eager to share their beliefs who are the skulls do you know anything about the murder that took place here do you guys do you do you guys know cindy the skull what what's with the jackets who are the skulls you don't know what kind of cop are you it's not a question don't get into it i'm so glad you asked <laughs> <laughs> the question is rhetorical he replies raising his open hand the skulls are the most vicious gang of the best guess best Mert not, Bert not, whatever best Mertine or the best Merti, the immortals are the west revocalian Re crime syndicates revocalian the nasty Nastiest bunch of psychos ever, jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases, possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. Non-verbal. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual, a testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around their brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Oh, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. 
Do you guys know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? A man was hanged in the backyard of the murder in rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. He clears his throat. It was a man. Also, he was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Ah, this sounds like... Epistemology, a field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of, aware of her work. I know that you don't know shit. I'm not going to say you this any longer. <laughs> exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can be one sure that there is truly a body hanging behind the hostel? What if it's art or a mere specter? Maybe it's true. The hangman is merely a prop in a performance. We are the audience, and the artist is hiding somewhere in the dark. That could be the case. Yes, a brilliant work of art. Lieutenant raises an eyebrow but does not comment. Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? The young man's eyes glaze over as he marks as he marks in a voice filled with longing. Oh yeah, Cindy's a pr right proper skull. Yeah. The other guy the other guy lights up too. A true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. By the way, if you see Cindy, give her regards, he adds, regard returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. Lieutenant on your left is unusually is unusually lenient toward them. Who's Van Eyck? Old man, it doesn't matter. You'll be long gone before his greatness is recognized. So you're saying an old man? Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm pretty old. Yep, he nods enthusiastically. Old as fuck. Yeah, man, it's like a death's door. No wonder you know nothing about the future. You won't be there. Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned, Lieutenant replies instead. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here, apart from the Union themselves, of course. Don't worry about that. We're going to make up for the de deficit. Yeah, we are. The young men exchange... Young men exchange approval not approving nod sorry your rhetoric is confusing are you part of the skulls or not we're not franchise skulls while well, not yet once we get our name out there we'll have a chance to join them and what makes you think the organization w would accept you because we can be just as psycho and vicious you'll see oh you'll see for sure once we're in it's the last thing you'll ever see before the ever see before the void consumes you throw him off his game are you implying i might be in some sort of danger are you sure a skull would say that the young man sli silently raises two fingers to his temple in an imaginary and an imaginary cock hits the cartridge a threat good i like those don't fuck with me boys i'm one of the bad cops <laughs> i just wanted to talk about music and now there's a, co a conflict all of a sudden it's too much <laughs> don't fuck with me whoa come on man he raises his open palms we're just talking here just words nothing wrong with that yeah no need to throw your authority in our faces you want to talk let's talk boys his eyes meet yours ask them he liked how you decisively shut down a situation that could have turned into a farce. Enough about the scullery then, conclude. Mm-hmm. What's with the jackets? What about them? Turn to the blonde youth. Why does your jacket have piss foglet written on it? Turn to the dark-haired youth. Why does yours have fucked the world? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person. Even though the statement has character, and I do like piss, the word piss foglet epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things be 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 he would like an like an art gang member, things an art punk. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you got to admit it catches the eye. And since the grand the grand piper is slowly but steadily moving toward ba towards basing the economy on it, attention. It is woo. It is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Uh, what makes sense? What I mean by the what, what I mean by this is we are all piss foglets, and the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even if it's na rather narrow. Okay, all right. This this conversation did not go how I thought it was going to. Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come with a jacket or are they derived from something else entirely. To catch a fish, you need to hurl, hurl the laurel, the lure. <laughs> <laughs> the lure, I'll hurl the lure many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though, blow it up. You get more fish in a shorter time, and f and for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. 
because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing, and that, to me, feels glorious, sticking your dick into the void. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Hey, <laughs> You can't lower your voice. Do you think it's a coincidence? What is? That there are three... Yes, there are two of us and two of these jackets. It's at least confused what you're implying. Which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Are you more of a piss foglet or a... Ooh, wrong amount of asterisks. Or a fuck the world kind of guy. Neither. Come on, Kim. It's just a mental exercise. Fine. If only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I if I were to already be down that path, I think Piss Foglet is the stronger of the two statements. No way. If <laughs> That works. I feel like... I feel more like a fuck the world kind of guy. Seems about right, Lieutenant Marks, especially considering your heroic e exit attempts. There's a, that's an origin story for the a dynamic duo right there. <laughs> so are we done here? <laughs> Can we get the jackets? Forty-two <laughs> percent. I think this one is worth it. I think this is one is worth it. Hold on, do we have do we have any half life? Hold on, half light. We don't, we don't, we don't have any, we don't have any half light. This is it. I want, I want to know this so bad. I want to know will Kim actually wear it? Oh my god, we can't level it up either. We can't, we can't level up either. I'm really tempted to save scum. I'm really, really tempted to save that scum right now. That ride is fucking lightning. Hey, look who it is. Shrunken cop head material. These guys aren't scary. You're not scary. I have nothing to work with here. It's either begging or bullying or both. Just ask them maybe. Gentlemen, I need your jackets. Oh, uh, why do I have to answer that? Point at your clothes. Look at the shit I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, like you said, total shit. What about, what about it? There's a spark of sympathy in the youth's eyes. You didn't say that. It's not, it's not shit. It's disco. I'm wearing horrible clothes to catch horrible people. It's depressing. My clothes make me sad. I need to fun it up. Lieutenant looks down at his bomber, bomber jacket and shrugs, obviously content with his uniform. Please. Fuck it. I don't deserve a cool jacket. I suck. <laughs> Please. Oh, what the... Fine. Fuck it. The human takes his jacket off. You take it then. I can't handle this sad shit. It's true, you simply can't. It's called empathy. Wow, I did not see that coming. You better wear that jacket with pride. Fuck that. You're not getting mine. The other one snaps at you. My dad's a lawyer in La Delta. He'll have your badge. No, he won't. The lieutenant is lightly amused by the situation. Wait, world fucker. You got a rich dad? Turn to Kim. I know you said you're more of a piss foglet kind of guy, but we only have one jacket and I want it. Turn to Kim. Fuck it. We don't need the other one. You said that you're more of a piss foglet kind of guy, so I got the jacket for you! I'm not wearing that jacket. Why not? You could heart, you could really raise hell, go undercover hard, but don't you want to express your individuality? I already am expressing my individuality. Still, it's good to know that we have it, should the need arise. The need will not arise. Look at this cute shit, the dark haired youth points at you, then turns to his friend. How can we become cops? Sorry, become skulls if you go around fraternizing with cops. Let's get the fuck out of here before anyone sees us. Fuck, I'm sorry, man. He hangs his head in shame. I just don't like confrontations, that's all. That went surprisingly well. We got rid of them, too. Drama authority. That went surprisingly well. Cindy's up here, right? Let's go. Let's go see Cindy while wearing this. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, wondering to themselves, where did that man get such a cool jacket? <laughs> did he receive it upon graduating the, the Ecole Normale Superiore de Badassery? Is he dangerous? Damn right I'm dangerous. You are very dangerous, my friend. Dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares say a single thing about the jacket, but believe me, they are all very impressed. <laughs> Oh, it's really snowing. Holy crap. This is Cindy, right? Hey, Cindy. Hello again. 
officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Piss Foglet and fuck the world send their rest. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. I think they're afraid of, they're afraid of you. Maybe it's just skull solidarity. I made them I made up I made up them sending their best part, but I did talk to them. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but she softens. But their hearts are in the right place. Skulls are cool. Can I be a skull? Fat chance, but you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. Okay then. How's that? She throws a con conspiratorial glance. She throws you a conspiratorial glance and presses her finger to her lips and squints up to the sky as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock but Martinez. No gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sp spelulcher? I hope I'm saying that right. We'll paint it red. We bring the, the raucous you ring the sirens. She's making a valiant effort to come across as a nihilist, but she's really just an angry little commie. No wonder she was she was talking about the streets flowing red. That's what happened during the revolution. So tell me, what's it like being a skull and a communist? She sighs, you got me, pig shit. I don't make for a very good skull. I like animals too much, simians and pigs. Could you wear the jeans briefly? Um, sure. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. It makes you look cool calm and collected as your hand enters the pocket your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly take the item out hey it's a chewing gum wrapper it reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots you should inspect it closer if you have time something about the wrapper's texture is familiar by the way the raw materials were most likely exported from sige the apricot suzerainty and processed in Sirlich Clef into the apricot flavor chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Hmm, something about it is familiar and not only to your, to your fingers. Interesting. Does this game have a limited amount of days or does it end when you finish the main story? I have no idea. No clue. Bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Cinder blocks charred, a makeshift fire, a makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. All right, is this like a really long conversation over here? Magnesium. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench don't look overly comforting. Hmm, the lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we solve the murder. Let's go. You can visit. Okay, so that's to just pass time. Plus one to kingdom of conscience. Do these pants have something in them? Hmm, these are some wonderfully... Wonderfully regular pants, not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things. Mm -hmm, I know you do. These inter isolary pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call them moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. But a little, you're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to. Centrist pants, you're right. You see dust covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. White curtains have been drawn shut, no one looking in. I'm sorry, no looking in. A wedding stone, well worn and covered in rust. Construction material, whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. Oh no, there's so many people here. Street sign is illegible below, below the graffiti. Bam, 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 bam. What are these? What are these doing in the fish? What? Oh, nice. New boots. This boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Unmoored. The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. The plants creak beneath your weight. Okay, so there's someone to talk to here. There's someone to talk to here. It's locked tight. Nope, okay. can't see into the house from this angle. Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. I like the smoke effect. Okay, so I'll talk to you here. Two kids. Hard to see details of colors, all warm and welcoming are cozy though. A flower chalk where nothing really grows, maybe in spring. I didn't read that right. Book, a primer for small kids. Textbook for the first grade in primary school. On the cover, a humanoid bear is pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. The letter S is dangerously tangling from the cart while E fell off a long time ago. Uh, children should pay more attention. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Can we go in? 
Yeah, we're an art sorry cop. Oh, we're just we're just stealing? Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. We just go into people's houses and just take stuff and they don't care right in front of them? What is this? Witcher 3? Little Lily. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches stu a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Where are your parents? My mom's outside and I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile like it's a good thing. What's that show of stuffed bird from the ceiling? It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Garth's good side if you make up for the score you broke. Yes, but what's it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure, I mean, you already took it. <laughs> I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. What's that uh, What's that thing you're holding? Point to her toy. It's Lambie. He's my friend, sort of like she holds up the fuzzy beast to demonstrate. Can I have that too? Lambie is a stuffed lamb that admittedly has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing and the fur is tattered in several places. Lambie looks like he's falling apart. Lambie looks soft. Yes, very soft. Suddenly she pushes the stuffed animal toward your face. Press your cheek against Lambie. Isn't he soft? She's right. Lambie is very soft. She rubs the white fur against your cheek and then returns the lamb to her lap, cuddling it. Goodbye. Bye. The girl's large curious eyes remain fixed on you. Do, 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 do. Okay, so... Glass tar. Okay, so some more people to talk to, maybe. Don't mind me, gentlemen, just stealing your money. Can we go down here? Shivers, a drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm, an elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with black asphalt. The asphalt first laid its gray. First laid is gray. The asphalt first laid is gray already. What? A, a row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. What about the bus stop? 13, 3, 1, 2, D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It was not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Am I mispronouncing asphalt? I thought it's asphalt. How do you say it? Asphalt? Isn't it asphalt? Asphalt. 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 Asphalt? Asphalt. So it was asphalt. Asphalt. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of flow, of flow of trade. There's one bump on the road, a dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away right at the turn, a dead dog. Tragedy came from the wheels of a fast RMC vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you, the sound of the sea has grown distant. Oh my, killed a dog? The wind moves the aerosol, the tech that stands behind the boom barrier, a breeze moves a curl of his hair. Okay, so we can't get past here, this is just a boundary. The water runs from the west, the source is upstream, a broken pipe. The beams are splintered, the bridge collapsed on its own, artillery broke it. Moon's haunted. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorn these adorns these reeds. That's a Nol Noland Vint Sink, an unsuccessful model. Rusty in letters read Mazet. Oh, I really wish I could just hold the button down to walk. Looking back at you from the rust colored water, you. After everything, it's still you. Wait, take a longer look at yourself and how you're reflected in that slick chemical rainbow. What do you see? Metaphor, it's always metaphor. Some kind of metaphor for me? There is more, it, this is more important than you. That's the blood of industry you see before you, the runoff from Coal City further down the coast. The engines of fortune once roared here, great wealth poured into Revishal, the Delta, as its smoke away sickness life. The engine stopped, the West Rev Revishalian industrial base was dismantled after the war. Now extinguished coke furnaces dot the landscape, a landscape despoiled by industry. I don't see the problem, Revishal moved on to, serv to a service industry, get with the times, yo. West Revishalian in industrial base? That's so me. There was a <laughs> serious dereliction of duty in this cleanup. Perhaps you could dedicate your life to cleaning it up, but you're a cop. You must concern yourself with different messes. Even so, it's pretty to think. Okay, so let's continue getting the feel of this area around here, and then we will stop because we're over time.
Click, 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 click. Oh man, at this rate, we're gonna have enough money for another uh, night. A school fish huddled on the fence post, then scattered, in, then scattered into the dark. Before you would draw a bridge, it can only be lowered from the other side. A kick drum pulse, the music coming from somewhere on the ice. What? Oh, this one. This is the drawbridge? Oh man, how do we do this? Full of holes. Could the posts hide treasure? Look inside. What? Wow. We're just stealing. Damn, it's cold outside. It's taking a lot of patience to do this. Oh, it's Dark Souls time! A pane of Eternite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. He adjusts his collar against a cool breeze. Could be convenient. Push the Eternite over. The pane falls into the icy snow with a soft thunk. Shortcut get! You should ask that girl on the ice what's going on here. He gestures toward the young woman next to the tent. More tribalistic markings. This post is covered in little humanoids. A pulse screwed in the ice keeps the tent erect. Trash from some unending party. There's someone home. This is someone's home away from home, just like yours. Oh man, can we sleep in the tent? Okay, so this is a church. Dusty pews in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you. An altar, shrouded, an altar shrouded in dark or something like that. It's too dark to tell. Yoink! Sign reads, St. Brune 1147. Wait. 1-1? One, one. These rusty gears just turn the whole machine. We're not even halfway done, are we? We're not even halfway done. The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. This barrel has been recently discarded. It smells of fuel oil. He doesn't know! It's like teeth. Tiny inlets there off in the far distance where the, po where the post trail toward. Shivers. Physical. Oh my god! Alright, it said something about re being replaced for a scarf, right? Got replaced for a scarf. What are you going to do? Apparently nothing. The ladder's too risky to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. This relay tower coordinates coordinates boat traffic to, in the bay barely. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. Cigarette butts cleaned away under a rock. Brand Tior Moroturi. You make a mental note. Tior Moroturi seems important somehow. Really? Does it? Really? Okay. Uh, okay, I think we're going to stop it here and we can move our way, like, work our way back down uh, when we come back. So, uh, that's going to be it for me. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. And have a good weekend if I don't see you. We found the line. Here it is. We've finally gone too far. Here it is. We found it. We found the line. We've crossed the line. We have located the line. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen now. I don't know what's going to happen after this. This is it. This is it. We finally crossed the line. Oh. If you're, if you're a part of chat, how does it make you feel that some people in chat view you as this? As part of the chat conglomerate. What does WUV stand for? It's, it's OU speak for love. D haven't, haven't you guys heard this? The OU um, gets woes and woes. Alright, this this is where, what kind of love is. This is this is a, a woe speak or a woo speak. I don't know what the fuck this is, alright? But th this is basically the idea of what oo is, alright? Imagine reading a post, but over the course of it, the quality seems to deteriorate. It gets worse and worse. Where the Swinton Street John Guan rewards to a point of order non Swinton. You just don't want to read it anymore. And your whole old year is just awful. But your post is knowing, yeah? It goes on and on and on and on. Uh -huh. When you stop waiting, but who? Quite stop waiting. Uh -huh. Started this a new old witch, no matter what. Uh -huh. This is the point that I can't understand it. Oh. 
It was not over. But we're not we're not getting to the end. That, that's that's oh what what is it called? Weebs, you know. What, what, maybe it doesn't have a name. Maybe weebs are completely disorganized. That's how they haven't enabled the AI yet. What what it, what is the name of this this speak? It's called degeneracy. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> you tell us who- hey. Hey, let's- let's not fight. Ooh, Country Roads? What? Oh my god, I know what this is. Oh my god, I already know what this is! I've- I've heard this before- oh no. Oh no, I already know what it is. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> I already know, I also know the version that's crunchy roll instead of crunchy roads. Anyway, let's let's have something nice on the screen. There we go. Look at look at best boy. Nice pose, looking handsome. Thank you, Q2. Oh, look at the hidden ayaya in in the um in the shirt. God damn hidden ayayas. D dis dis quo. A Ewezium is the only valid name for the stream drop. <laughs> I'm more excited about Stellaris still see inside. I really want to play Stellaris. I really want to play Stellaris. Uh, I was talking a little bit um, to Mendy about uh, Total Warhammer 2, and I, I really want to try that. I'm not big into Warhammer. I did try some Warhammer when I was a teenager, and I couldn't I couldn't keep up with my friends who who just had um, way more resources to buy models than I did. Like I, I just couldn't keep up with it, so um, I fell off, off of that. But I, I did enjoy. And I don't think I ever played the game. I just liked the collection kind of aspect of it. But uh, Total Warhammer, um, like it, that, that looks like fun. And I've never played a, a Total War game before. Uh, at least not not for any amount of time that's worth speaking about. So um, I would like to I would like to try that. Yeah, tabletop is very expensive. You want to be current? You failed at managing resources. Then maybe like I had I had um, I had parents that would tell me shit like um, you're you're not allowed to get a job because we want you to focus all your efforts on on school and getting really good grades. So if you ever if you ever want money to to get something, then just come to us and ask. And then when I would do that, they would throw a shit fit that, that I was asking for money for hobbies and stuff. And then I would say, okay, well, I'm going to go get a job then. And they say, no, 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 no. And it just, it just turned into this like ball of guilt. Yeah. So that was, um, that was my teenage life. Let's, uh, put new best boy down here. Thank you again, Q2. These are absolutely gorgeous. I want them all printed out so they can go on my wall. I'm not even kidding. Total Warhammer aren't good stream games. They're way too slow. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I would still like to try them. Sorry, it was supposed to be a joke. No, it triggers. It was it, no, no, no one's triggered. Don't worry. Do you also want a print of the Daddy Joe thing? What Daddy Joe thing? What are you talking about? White Light did a seven fucking hour long review of Death Stranding. Yep, I yeah I saw it. Um, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, haven't had time to watch it yet. Um, he he spoke to me about it briefly. He was worried about it getting up on YouTube, and um, I don't really I didn't really help him. I just kind of said to him. Is, is is your footage in 1080p or 1440p? And he said 1080. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine then. Don't worry. And th that was it. <laughs> uh, he has a shout out to you about horror games, does he? Oh no, the cursed video. All right, so um, where were we last time in Disco Elysium? We just got into the new area, so we're in, in the swamps. So this game's like Dark Souls. And, um, wasn't there something to do with, um, like, there, there were parts of this, like, there was a church we hadn't explored yet, and we wanted, we got to the end of it, and now we're going back down to explore, right? I think that's what we're doing. Ooh, what's that over there? The boardwalk rises to your south, it casts its long shadow over you. I like the word boardwalk. Waifu coin redemption? Where's the dad joke calendar? You guys get some free ones. Here's here's one of my own. Which Witcher sign does a pirate like best? Ard. Where's it? Oh, here it is. Oh, some people don't get it. Uh, I, gu I guess if you if you don't know the Witcher signs, it's not funny. You're ignorant. Uh, what's the day? 
Why did the cowboy ride his horse? Because the horse was too heavy to carry. <sighs> Just because this guy is the only chimney sweep in town, he thinks he can raise his prices through the roof. Have you heard of the band 999 Megabyte? They haven't got a gig yet. <laughs> That one was good. <laughs> and last one for today's. My mom bought me a cheap dictionary for my birthday. I couldn't find the words to thank her. Should be one a one thousand twenty three hundred. Like, yeah, but you know, it's 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 for normies. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long time. You see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military a service depot of some sort. Use the service what? Probably something that is no longer there. Lieutenant looks, uh, uh, l looks, the hunching, concrete toad in front of him. All right. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere or a fortification like a sea fort in the bay. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. What? All right. Okay. There's no way we're winning a three percent. How high can we get interfacing? Okay, we already have two. It's impossible. Holy crap. What if we put like the crowbar in our hand? I think it, it would say no tool in hand, right? If the crowbar would even help. No. That's kind of lame. Do we save scum? Do we save scum? It's 3% literally impossible. Literally impossible. What do you mean? What do you mean literally impossible? What if we just do it first try? You rattle the handle a bit and then push on the door with all your weight. It's not budged. Not only is it locked, it also it's also jammed shut. How the door shut tight? How can we get in there? The tent shrugs. We don't get in there. What do you mean we get into like everywhere? Come on, we even got in the light bending guy's container, but you're saying we can't get in there? Frankly, you're just going to have to set the fact that you can't get in through every single door. No, no, no. We've gotten into every door thus far. That's what we do. We we open doors. We're cops. That's our perk. Even Everett knows that's a, that's a part of our MO. But that's who I, who I am. Who we are. I'm not going to accept this. This door could be part of the investigation. Okay, I can live with this. Accept it. <laughs> But that's who I am, who we are. Yeah, I understand you. I like opening doors as much as the next guy, but this one is simply beyond repair and we don't have the resources needed to open it. Relax, no one's hiding in there. If we can't open it, others can't either, and thus they can't get in. He looks at the door with a rueful smile. At least you can think about opening it. After About doors in general, they are, after all, fundamental to your life. Perhaps something useful will come from this. Wait, useful? You can't open it? It's impossible to open this door. You sure? One more door. God damn it, it cannot be a disgrace. That door on the coast, you remember that one, right? You remember the one, right? The one that leads to the abandoned supply depot? Why, in the name of all that's holy, does it not open? Why? There has to be a way to get through the unop that unopenable door. By God, you the police. All doors are supposed to open before you. What will the others at the precinct think if you can't open a goddamn door? There must be a way. I spent like an hour to know it's a 6-6 six, six failure on this one. Really? I saved scum with height interfacing before, but I don't think you can't wait. Hold on. Why why are we getting inconsistent results? Some people got in, other people have not. No, I opened the door. Chat would never lie. Chat would never lie to me. I wanna know what's in the I wanna know what's in the depot. I opened the door and it was full of waifus. Alright, let's pull it up. Pull new should should we save scum to get inside the depot yes no there you go set a cap before you start so we aren't here for an hour well what do you mean if we if we're safe scumming we're gonna be here until we roll six six that shouldn't take too long oh it's pre-split yes is narrowly winning 100 140 votes yes is narrowly winning if you get a 6 plus 6, you still lose according to the internet. But, according to some random person in chat, they got a 6-6 six, six and they got in. So who are we going to believe? Someone in chat who has the best intentions. Or, the internet. But chat is part of the internet. Alright, it seems like yes is winning. I guess we're safe scumming. Reduce Ayaya if you get it. <laughs> Fuck. 
Four, two. Okay. If we get in, if we get double six and we get in, I'll take a million coins off of Yaya. Alright? Ooh, close. Five, three. Ah, oh, three, one. This was almost a not safe scum playthrough. But if you can't get in, it still is a no safe scum playthrough. Because if you can't get in, you can't get in. Here's the roll. I was pretty mad. Wow. It's true. It's true. But that could be photoshopped. The door is a yaya. <laughs> uh, oh, almost. I rolled high enough with interfacing to get it to 21, and it, but it didn't open. Yeah, it says right here, uh, double six always wins, but apparently this is a lie. All closer. We're getting closer, chat. This is how numbers work, right? We're getting closer. What if we put interfacing clothes on? Interfacing. Do we not have any interfacing? <gasps> there we go. Gloves. Nice. What? The building for your house. The engine. Must have been a big one. All right. All getting closer. It's a 1 in 36 chance it can't possibly take very long. Exactly, exactly. We will confirm for ourselves. This is like the weebs chipping away at the AI fund. Except we'll, we'll see the end to this. Do you, oh, 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 okay. This, can, this can't be the one. This can't be the one. It wouldn't happen right afterwards. Three more, three more. We'll get it in the next three. Wait, is Joe safe coming this? I I'm safe coming to see if it's possible. If we get six six and it opens, we're not even going inside. We're just gonna walk away. But you'll enable the IIF. If if the door opens and it doesn't fail, I will take a million coins off the IIF fund. Keep going until six plus six. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Three two. What if the game just re-rolls any 6-6 six, six rolls until it, until it can present you with a, a, fail, a failure roll? Yeah, I thought about that too, but um, Q2 had a had a totally not photoshopped um, screenshot of getting 6-6. Six, six. This could take 200, 200 attempts. This, this could take 5,000. We could be here all day. We're in the, the low roller arc right now. It was a photo you weave. <laughs> Oh, well, halfway there. I'm unhappy because it feels like breaking the game. I would argue that if you can't open the store, I think this is 100% intentional that you're supposed to go through this. Sands from Undertale. Okay, chat, I need to know, like, is is it always best girl and waifu? Or if, if it's a boy, do we say best boy and husbando? I need to, I need to know going forward. Oh no, critical failure. Snu Snuggles is sub bond with, with 39 subs. Holy crap. I would read them out, but I'm doing something really important right now. Super important. <coughs> if we had still had the hype train, how, would that have just been a hype train all by itself? That's how many tries this is gonna do. <laughs> There's two five sixes in a row. Does it just, does it just like, if you get a double six, does it just knock one off? What are the odds of a five six in a row? Will you now think that the role, every role in the game is right? Nah, I don't think so. Wasn't there something about Jonathan Blow was playing Dicey Dungeons or something, and and he went on a rant saying that the RNG was rigged, something like that, and it just really isn't. He was just in a bad mood or something. But how can you know exactly? That's true. How can you know? The dev of the win. Yeah, he, he got... It was really early in the game. And he had a couple bad rolls. And he was like, this isn't how random chance works. And it was like, wow. I mean... He was streaming. And all streamers have some, some streamer moments. So, like, it's not unforgivable or anything. But it was kind of like, whoa. Apparently it was like super early on in the game. And he had barely seen any of it yet. 
Would you say he was blowing it out of proportion? <laughs> heated streamer. Not a heated streamer moment. I thought that was a heated gamer moment. No, like like a, like a boomer moment. You know what? That doesn't make it better, does it? Like, boomer, yeah, yeah, okay, I don't know. Like, um, you know when they say when you get old, you have a senior moment? It's like, it's like a streamer moment when you, you just don't get something and you just make an ass out of yourself. Maybe it's just me. You can't open that door, Joe. Don't tell me what I can't do. Don't tell me what I can't do. Sprinklers at 10. Sprinklers at 10. You just reloaded that trying to die really. We have a John Locke right here. Eh, someone got the reference. That's nice. It's hard code, so you can't do it. But Q2 had had a photograph of him getting a 6-6 six, six on here. So we can get a 6-6 six, six, too and see. Oh, almost halfway there. The door has ruined the game for me. Every time I encounter a door from now on, I will have to wonder if it's yet another case of the game lying to me. Exactly. Exactly. Damn. You know me better than I know myself. Say hi to the future. Best of Joseph Anderson Disco Elysium video. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the, to the Joseph Anderson Best of Disco Elysium video. So you accept the 6-6 six, six photos roll, but not the result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the key to the door is under the truck by the SSN. Hey, that one ha that one ended up being true. So, come on. Know your memes. 66 six is fine, but can we get a 69 now? Nice. And we'll say, like, m missing number is kind of creepy. Was it unknown number or missing number? It was missing no, right? I saw it was a little creepy. Good thing it was in a video game. I gotta tell you guys one, one of my greatest secrets about video games, right? I gotta tell you guys. In the original Red version, all of my max level Pokemon were from uh, Rare Candy hack through missing now I didn't manually raise any Pokemon up to max level sorry sorry who didn't that didn't do that though that's how I think too but you know all these people in chat right now are gonna be like no I never did that manually raise no rare candy nope bitch I was a kid how would I know everyone knew about missing number Everyone knew about that, how to how to get that. It spread through all the all the schoolyards in all the world, just like that weird S symbol that we all used to carve. I was literally in kindergarten. What were you playing Pokemon for then? I enjoyed the one hour putting a box on a fan, but you sure you want to go for another round two? <laughs> Alright, a hundred more tries, and if we don't get a hundred tries, we're gonna move on. When I was a kid there was this there was this thick medical book for kids with Disney characters in it, and there was there was a chapter about mental health. Whoa, 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 mental health. I'm I'm invested, and some obvious things to teach your kids not to do, like counting insects or raindrops. And here we are. Stay determined. All right. Oh, so close. Isn't this check literally unwinnable? Nah, it's it's a it's a myth. If you get two double sixes in a row after quick loading. What if they code it so you can't get a double six within the first, like, five seconds of loading a game? There was, <laughs> there was this part, there's a part in the Witcher video um, where I'm talking about all the notes that I took. And I speak about how um, it, one, one of the notes was uh, me very, very angrily writing. Witcher 1, Taller cheats at dice. Do an analysis of every dice game against every opponent in the game to confirm that Taller cheats at dice. And I, and like, I get, I get to like, the part in, in the video, like, like months later, when it's time to put it together. And I'm like, nope, not doing that. Fuck you, Pastio. <laughs> 
Nope. <laughs> That's how it feels right now. <laughs> Four, five. There's a, there's a line in the video about that. He totally cheats at dice, though. He totally cheats at dice. Best boy taller doesn't cheat. I agree, taller is best boy, but he cheats at dice for sure. Can't believe we wasted the first hour of the stream. You know what stream this is. Are you really surprised that we're doing this? Come on. All right, let's put some music on at least. Let's listen to some Hundred Tail. So grating. Oh my god, it's the grating. It's like nails on a chalkboard. This part's okay, like relatively okay, but the beginning is just, it's so grating. Joe, I hate this. Good. You should hate it. Are you enjoying this more than working on the Witcher video? Honestly, no. Because I'm so close to being done, it's like I just want to be done. But, you know, it's around the same. It's on so bad! It's so bad! Oh no! Alright, we're done. You know, I weren't joking when I said it took an hour. I believe you. For real though, can you play the Hollow Knight OST, please? Are we allowed to play Hollow Knight OST? What should we play? Seal of Vessel? Seal of Vessel is epic. Play the Odyssey theme? I'd rather listen to Snow Halation. Actually, that's not true. I'd rather listen to the Odyssey theme. Odyssey theme's not bad. Is it too loud? Too quiet? <gasps> Alright, that's it. You can't get in there. You can't get in there. Thank you, Hollow Knight music. You cannot get in there. 100% confirmed. Alright. Q Q2 redeemed. 1 million off the AI fund. What are you talking about? It was if we got inside. If we actually got inside, we take a million off the AI fund. We didn't get inside. Weaves trying to change history. Trying to alter the terms of the arrangement here. What's going on, Weaves? Can't, I can't believe you'd be scummy like that. It was if we got inside. A dead phone with smash receiver like someone who went to it. You know what? You know what? I'm adding a million onto it. Because you guys trying to alter the agreement, I'm adding a million onto a IF fund. Here we go. That's what you get for trying to cheat me. Alright. 997 to 998. There you go. Now there's a million on top of it. Despair, weeps. Despair. 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 Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. Hey, weeps. Want to reload and try and go for a 6-6 to stop that from happening? Hope you saved up a lot of coins for the 29th to undo this this gigantic misstep. What would lizard brain lizard brain what, what would lizard brain think of this? <laughs> lizard brain. Uh, ancient reptilian brain. Yep. Yep. <laughs> a woo speak. Can you imagine an ancient reptilian brain doing a woo speak? Ah, the Ayaya fun keeps getting woes and woes. All the weeds wanted me to, to watch Madoka Madonna Magic. Some of them were getting angry that I wouldn't watch it. Like, it was getting legit serious. If Undo Chan won, the weebs could have had another shot. <clears throat> weebs, do you want to invoke Undo Chan? Alright, let's do it. Pull new. Weebs, channel your energy to summon Undo Chan. Yes, no. Can you summon Undo Chan, Weebs? Let's see. Let's see if the Weebs can summon Undo Chan. Oh my god, it's exactly 50 50. <laughs> what the fuck are you guys doing? What the fuck are you guys doing? How is it 50 50? I didn't realize we had so many non-weebs. Holy crap. Wait, are some are some of you self-hating weebs? 
Wow, I thought we had way more weebs in this. Hold the line against the... <laughs> Self-eating weeb. Oh, channeling, channeling uh, on Duchan is winning right now. Huh. Hmm. All right, so it seems like yes one. Yes one. So Undo Chan, Undo Chan can come along and save the day. But the future refused to change. Undo Chan didn't answer the call. Cross the line. You cross the line. You cross the line. Joe, this is the second time you fuck over the AI of fun because of me. Weez will think I'm on the other side and I'll be outsider. Why'd you do this, Jojo? Hey, did you guys, you guys don't even pay attention? Undo Chan came and saved the day. The million is back. The million is back. Ralph Cox used some bits to say, who did they get the, get to bug test this game? Pro tester. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Ralph calls you the non to say, what's the difference between a politician and a flying pig? The F. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You can use it to call someone unless you're out of change. You hear the tone. The machine is operable. Put 10 cents and dial a random number. All right. Calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? End of tone. Someone picks up. Pierre? Is that you, Pierre? The voice is female and sounds about 100 years old. Yes, it's me, Pierre. I might be. What's Pierre like? No, this is not Pierre. I might be. What's this Pierre like? So nice of you to find the time to call me. It gets so lonely. Even the animals have died. What kind of pets did you have? That's not good. It gets lonely even when you're with people. Aw, oh, that's too real. What kind of pets did you have? Are you sure you're Pierre? Your voice is different. I, there, chrysanthemum. Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach. Washing a beach. Growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. You get a sinking feeling and it makes you look... It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. Put 10 cents in and dial a random number. Some of the mask and voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, you're electricity. <laughs> no, what you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. Hey, Gerard, is get your wife for me, will you? Is this electricity? <laughs> I need to speak with electricity, please. Gerard, what a douche name. Change it. Change your name. Sorry. All right, let's go with drama. No, but I got a feeling I'll kick your ass is going to make me make an appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. Phone hanging up. Okay, one more time. Stop calling me, man. Someone picks up the voice on the other end. is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, all right? I just need till tonight. Let me work. Uh, who is this? Yes, but a slight change of plans. I want this delivered to the Whirling and Rags and Martinez. We could all be a bit kinder to each other, don't you think? Consider your debt paid, my friend. <laughs> you seem to be in some sort of trouble. Maybe I can help you. I'm a police officer. You didn't pick drama. You feel I didn't. I'm sorry. I, I, I saw in chat someone said listen to drama, and I thought that was the drama one. The phone gets ha hanged up uh, fast as lightning. All you hear is a little shuffle of nylon as the hand moves on the other end. Disconnect tone. Can't come a single come lets you know the time is ready to move on now. Alright. I won't force Kim to go through all this. Like we just did with chat. I'm sorry that was uncalled for. What, the failure thing? No. It's fine. Someone has left an unidentified article unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. What do you mean what what calls come on, we can't waste time. Guys, come on. We can't waste time in the game. The cloth, if you can call it, if you still call it that, makes a soft crunching sound as you thrust your finger into it. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dyed sea, dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left on, in the surf until someone laid it out on this bench to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking this with you. Why not? It's a guano encrusted jacket and you're already carrying around enough as it is. This is true. All right, we're going back to the phone. We're going back to the phone. I'm tired, a man answers fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You're typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. What are you tired of? 
writing. I hate writing so much, but I have to get back to it. The man disappears with a sigh. Too real. You do not you do not hear the customary disconnect tone, just silence in the handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. Seems like it did not it did not have time to swallow the coin. This happens sometimes. Dial a random number with your eyes closed. You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down the, on the number. Then move up one and repeat the motion twice. Strange, this is not how you started before. Wait, what did I just do? You dialed 001. This is not the area code of Revishal. It is it is another destination, another Isola, some far off nation state. 005 is Revishal Sar. 001 is Grad on the Grad I Isola, where the telephone was invented. What? The next two digits you dial are the area code for the city of Morova. Keep dialing. 414447, the rotary dial feels cold from the Sierra. How does the phone line get through the, the pale? Keep dialing. 11, 17, 3, 6, 1, your fingers keep moving like a spider every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal like the like a bell tolling. There's more? Yes, 451, 67, 451, you are going deeper now into some unknown place far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. Finish it. 451, you have dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has, has been waiting silently to relay the, a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think, but it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your ear fills with a crackle, the wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there, not like the local calling tone before. No, a small ring in a cage of distortion, far away, a distant network of phones. And on the other side, ay ay ya ay ay yeah calling, calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world, calling still. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Mom spaghetti. Oh no! Oh no, it's it's three percent. Kim. Lieutenant is too far away to hear your yelp. The sea wind blows. Let it call more. Calling, 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 calling still. Then the ocean breaks out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges, small, the dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? Whoa, this has voice acting. Hello? She sounds sleepy. Hello, I want to die. Who is this? I don't know who I am. I am an and I am an amnesiac. Your voice is so beautiful. Goodbye. Hello. Mm. She hums, her voice warm from sleep. Who is this? I want to die. I don't know who I am. I'm an amnesiac. I want to die. What? what? It takes takes second for her to realize what you said. I don't know why I said that. Your va your voice makes me want to turn into dust. Oh no. Is that you? Her voice sounds like she's waking up now, still plaintive, tired. Is this our ex-wife? This is too much. You need to recede. A creature is a creature. I wish I was the wind. Oh no, not this. What time is it? Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. Dora, the name feels like a gift, a gift that was meant for you to make it possible to live. In the distorted distance, you hear someone turning next to her. Bed springs rattle. Don't react. Whatever you do, don't react to that last thing. Don't react. Doesn't matter if you react or not, you still, you, you still think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. Your voice is so beautiful. No, no. It's you, isn't it? It's you. I don't know who I am. I'm I am an amnesiac. You're not an amnesiac, Harry. You're trunk. You only have two, maybe three things left to say before the change the change runs out. Harry, how'd you know my name? Harry, who's Harry? Are you sleeping with him? I'm also Harry. I'm not I'm not drunk. Okay, I'm drunk. What does it matter? I'm still me. I'm not drunk. I'm high. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? The silence, it's heavy as tin, the white noise howls. Hey, ooh, are you there? <laughs> Say nothing, hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. Sounds like she's looking for a clock on the nightstand. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Do you want to party? I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. You're in Marova, right? Where are you going in two hours? I am the law. I'm a detective. I'm doing a case. There's a hanged man. Is someone there with you? Hang up. Hang up. I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? This is bad. Do you feel your right hand on the handset cramping with pain? Do you want to party? <laughs> My heart hurts. I'm going to have a heart attack. Oh no, please stop. Please let's just have a 
hang up. You're in Morova, right? Yes, I'm in Morova. Sleeping. I'm the law and the detective. Where are you going in two hours? To work. To work? Where? The academy. Where I work. The academy? That sounds better than my job. I'm happy. My job is sad and terrible. It's dead bodies in it. Pfft, academy. My job is real. The academy sounds better than my job. No response. Only a sigh. The connection crackles like burning paper. To a case, hangman. She's not answering anymore. I'm gonna solve it. Doesn't matter. This case doesn't matter. None of it matters. Not anymore. Can you help me solve it? I need to solve it. They won't take me back if I don't. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. Harry. Disconnect tone. The machine ran out of money. Put 10 cents in and dial the long phone number again. Really? It's not gonna work. You dial the number again. 26 poles of the rotary dial. The machine eats the coin in a terrifying ocean distance rustles in your ear. In the middle of it, a familiar ring, small, distorted, calling. Let it call. Calling, 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 calling. It looks like she does not want to pick it up. Harry, stop. Stop scaring her. Why? Come on. You know why. Still let it ring. Calling, calling. Harry, please. Oh, wow. She answered. A sad voice answers, dressed in distortion. I need answers to my mystery. I need to know who you are. Who are you? Harry, please. I'm going to end this call, damn it. There was someone there before. I heard someone. Who's there with you? I need to know who you are. Who are you? Please. I'm going to hang up now, okay? Phone hanging up. Okay, was it one more time last time? I'm going for it. Joe, uncalled for. Come on. <laughs> And calling for who knows how long, but no one answers. You need to insert more money to call again. You want my money? Punch the phone. Okay, that was more like hitting it with your chest. The cold metal is hard and your knuckles. <clears throat> the cold metal is hard and your knuckles. You look at them turning purple. You want more money, huh? You want fucking money? Punch the phone again. It didn't give you any fun for that money. Your hand is turning blue now. Blood drifts to the ground. Blood just your knuckles to the sand. Drip, drip, drip. All right, that was cool. What's the next game after Disco Elysium? I'm not sure. Disco Elysium is probably going to take us until uh, the Witcher video is out, and then we can start playing some longer games. But um, if it doesn't, then we will play some roguelikes for a bit. A coin-operated weighing machine. It hasn't been used in a dec for a decade. Maybe we'll play like some Slay the Spire, um, some FTL, like those kind of games. Vagrants have recently painted the tarp red. Water drips from it. Encyclopedia Reception. Longer games than this. Yeah, we shouldn't have started playing this game. It was a big mistake. Sorry. Most of you don't seem to mind, but yeah, we shouldn't have started playing this. A makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make uh, the boardwalk inhabitable. Sorry, habitable. That tarp will keep out neither rain, nor snow, nor wind. Did you see White Light 7 Hour Death Stranding review? I really liked it. Run me some of your videos. I haven't watched it yet, no. Big wine canister. It's open and empty. Oh man, is this guy dead? The smell, it's awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. Cover your nose. What is it? Isn't it just rotting fish? What is it? Don't you recognize it? That hideous pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Kim, what's that smell? Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Eyes up, detective. Something's not right here. Careful there. Those These floorboards look rotten and weak. Oh, is this guy actually dead? Well, that's not going to stop us from talking to him. Coin operated viewer has been out of order for years. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. Um, do we want to get another thought going? Do we want to do the door? Do you think if we do that, we can open the door? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> read it. We already read it. And we have a, a point we can use later. There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the, t the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor. Plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. The lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Oh, you're looking... <laughs> okay. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is a black market version of Astra cigarettes known for their high tar content. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Ravishal. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. My name's Harry Mason. I'm in town on vacation. Working class corpse. 
A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits in his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. I think this whole aspect of the mind talking to you thing is fucking brilliant. Agree? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I really like it. You need an item to open the door? Oh man, maybe we should reload. Pucker Starfish uses 100 bits to say, now I'm curious, have you ever quit a game on stream before finishing it? Um, uh, yeah, but I think only a couple. Outer Worlds, we, we didn't we didn't finish playing. Um, I picked a really bad character build. If we hadn't picked a, if I, we, if I hadn't picked a bad character build, I think we would have continued with it. Hello Neighbor, yeah, we didn't finish Hello Neighbor, but we got, we ran into a glitch. Didn't know it at the time, but a glitch stopped us from, from being able to finish it. Moonlighter, yeah, there's, there's a couple that we haven't played for, for very long. But usually we try to finish games when we start them. That might be a mistake, actually. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the left leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on, Lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back and void of any signs of life. Lividity is fa faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, he's been dead for two days, no longer. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. We need to investigate. Calm, calm now, carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Just a uh, other, another. <sighs> Damn, how many mistakes? Dead body, breathe. Study the man's clothes. Do I need to patch the game or something? Like, I have auto-patching on Steam. And it hasn't had an update. He's wearing mud cake boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue, bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Yeah, in case you didn't know that about Hello Neighbor, uh, we couldn't do the last section because we couldn't jump up uh, on this ledge, or we couldn't jump up on this other level. Uh, apparently, in the in the level before that one, you're supposed to get a double jump ability. You're supposed to go through some part of the house and get a double jump ability, and we found a way to just get past that without ever getting the double jump ability. So we got to the last section without double jump, and because we didn't have double jump, we couldn't do that part. So it doesn't even look like you need double jump to get up there, but yeah, because we didn't have double jump, we couldn't do it. So that's why we never finished Hello Neighbor. Because we glitched our way through some bullshit. He's wearing mud cake boots. Which has, okay, search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded in two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good, we should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through the crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still tang tangling. Tangling through the hole. Tangling? I think that's supposed to be dangling, right? Tangling through the hole. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his mustache. His eyes empty and wide look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height 170, 175 cm. Curly hair, stout build. Age approximately 50 to 60, 60 years. Okay, so I don't really mind the typos because I look at this project and uh, this game and I think holy shit like there's just so many options and so much text that going through and checking it all must be very very difficult but is that wrong of me like if you typed if you like did a count of all the words in here like i don't know i don't know how much time we have left but i'm gonna guess it's probably average novel length is around it varies but i'm gonna say around seventy thousand words i'm gonna say this is at least three novels so i mean i feel like I don't mind, and I wonder if that's if that's off. I think that said it's a million words. It's a million words. Hmm, okay, so that's 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 more than three novels. Okay, editing a million words with all the different possibilities is pretty hard. Hmm, but I mean, the way that they have to edit all of this together, it should be easier than for for them to see all the text. But like, trust me, text has a really bad tendency of just kind of bleeding together when you're not reading it aloud. That's why Lily and I read everything out loud. And we still miss mistakes sometimes. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely overcome with the awful surprise of it all. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. This could have been us, Harry. Examine the man's head. A dry chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. I don't see any other major wounds to you. It's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether he, whether the dead man's weight was what caused the boardwalk to break it. It definitely looks fragile, but not that fragile. You see waves turning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. 
He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would have never found him. Examine the bottle. A 0 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tar all around us. He looks at the other, at two other bottles near the coin operated viewer, then at your yellow plastic bag. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. True, it feels disrespectful. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rubowski Spearmint Chewing Gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half a gate from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly nearly the whole pack is there, solidified on his lower rear teeth. That's kind of weird. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is... The man shudders from the cold. I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. Step back. Oh, it's the chewing gum killer! Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to kn he'd have to know the spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? This is an omen, a sign from above. Don't start drinking again. He looks like me. I could have ended up just like him, dead on some empty boardwalk with a bottle next to my corpse. Looks like just another drunkard to me. I think labeling him as an alcoholic is a bit premature. We don't know anything yet. It's in number one. Well, at least you're not married. Kim points at the ring on the man's left hand, the flesh around it swollen and gray. Or what if you are? But let's try not to... But let's try to not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Could he be related to the lynching? Do you think he was drunk? Point to the bottle. What about the kebab? Yeah, what about the kebab? Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. Could he be related to the lynching? No, I don't see, see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident unrelated to the murder case. Yes, but what if there's a killer on the loose? Two suspicious deaths in such a short time frame. We should consider the possibility that we're dealing with a sequence killer here. You're right, connecting with lynching is a stretch. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I agree. I, I feel like it is a stretch. However, unless... Unless... Fuck it, let's go with it. A sequence killer. Kim narrows his eyes in the wind. There's nothing that connects these two bodies. This is a completely different case. An accident. Someone could have pushed him from behind with the, an intention to kill. I'm just saying that we should be open to all possibilities. Yes, but I just wanted to make it clear it's not a sequence killer. Okay, <laughs> do you think he was drunk? Point to the bottle. Oh yes, Lieutenant nods. What about alcohol, alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior, working on a Witcher video, but I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab, he shrugs. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the pox. The pox? Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab and a cigar. Someone should be held responsible. They'll seal this place off after the news after the news reached the coalition officials, I doubt that they'd ha they have enough re resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. He smiles sourly. Right, conclude. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still the question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the lead to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Or I could pass an interfacing check and stamp down on one of these boards and just let the problem solve itself. Hold on, what about field autopsy? We found him. We should finish this. Take the case. Let's leave this case for the station. I don't want to spend time on it. We still need to decide how I want to solve this case. Uh, hold on, what about field autopsy? Field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. This looks like a simple accident to me. I say we should just write down head drama, head drama, trauma to the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Yes, but isn't that kind of sloppy? You're right. I don't see anything criminal here. Let's see that. Isn't kind of sloppy? Maybe we don't really have that, that much time or resources to spare. The guys at the, process, at the processing will take care of the rest. All right, let's take the case. All right, we should first examine that library card you found. Then we can call a station from Akinema. Let them know we're taking the case. Nice. Chase is on the case. Library card found from a pocket of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's still slightly damp to the touch. The cover bears the stamp of Jamrock Public Library. I really like the name Jamrock. Library card is folded into and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads Central Jamrock Public Library card issued to Billy Magine. Billy Jean? 
expires 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could the could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil, radio, thriller, stand a, stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one on this list is The Glinting Curve by M. Thibault. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. Thriller. Look at the backside. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 blah 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 or visit us at Moreau Street 78 Jamrock Business Hours 9 to 18. Good. He takes a note. We should give them a call from my Kinema. Kin Kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Magine. Put it away. Alright. Well, we still have this shitty shirt on. There we go. See if we can talk to Kim more about the case or something else. Now, well, usually when he has someone to say or we can talk to him more, it shows up down here. And that's not happening, so I don't think so. Maybe. Bars cover these long, dusty windows. Perception, hearing. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're, co they're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Try to see inside. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of, collapsing, of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? Point at the windows. No, he shakes his head. The windows rattle in their frames. I won't even try, you know. He takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. What? This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk. Can you still shoot, though? Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I passed my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Wow. Better than Mario Odyssey. Another power box. It charges nothing now. It's empty. The fence blocks the path. No way on from here. Oh damn. That was... That, that was, uh... Lucrative use of a crowbar. How big is this area? Oh my god! Oh, this game, man. This game. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electric R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops. What? A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Okay. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says. Don't yawn on stream. Oh, sorry. It says tomorrow is just a whisper away. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. He raises the collar of his bomber jacket. Turn away. And me, Kyle. Notice the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather-worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You, officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez. I'm Trant Heidelstan. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Well, we're not online. How do you know Kim? <gasps> do you play pinball? Nice to meet you. Lieutenant nods. Hold on, hypertext? Wait, what was that about the windows before? Hold on, hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Yan Karp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making a fancy words. This doesn't mean anything. Wait, what was that about Windows before? Oh, yes. So, Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago, so they didn't have windows on the south wall. There's something about this guy's delivery that's making me think of something, and I can't place it. Anakin from, from The Phantom Menace, maybe? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. He rests his hand on the boy's shoulder. The, the child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worm-themed coloring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. Maybe it's something that the kids watch? It's gonna drive me crazy. It sounds just like something I know. Fuck. 
He then speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms, when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revishaw West. He points to the building again. This man is your half-brother, you feel it, but why? Wow, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The orb <laughs> Get a load of this guy. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cyber cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. What's so fascinating about an old building? You look like someone who has money. Do you have any money? <laughs> What's so fascinating about the old empty building? Aha, but it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hand to his eyes, springtime sun warming his handsome face. All four of you turn to admire the merle before you. Is this a JoJo reference? What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Feld Electrical. And Feld, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Hold on, what's R&D? Let's look at the building looming over you. It looks old and weathered, the seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the class rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on the broken windowsill. Wait, what's an R&D de department? Apologies. It's an acronym for research and development they don't use anymore. He smiles brightly, laugh lines around his eyes. You're probably more familiar with RTD, Research and Technological de Development. Mia culpa, you were not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. I don't think I've ever heard of this fell electrical proceed. That's not surprising. Only a vestigi vestigial ink cartridge and ferro tape manufacturer remains. He adjusts his suit jacket. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Kon Koningstein. Koningstein? Two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revishal, Feld became a global play. He's not, he's not Nagito. What are you guys doing? Well, after an aggressive move to Revishal, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. He gestures toward the building. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Me, or should I say, a pickle. They were developing an ace up their sleeve. He grins. I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? It was here in Pickle, pickle A's, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for... He pauses for effect. A tape computer. A tape computer? Mm hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferro tape ribbons, portable enough to be a take it home solution, revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bringing them to the average consumer, Hajime. Oh god, Lily's hearing me do the voice. Hey, hey, Lily Chan, how's it going? It's me, Pickle Nagito. Hey, Pickle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I laugh in, in pickle and pickle negative voice? You <clears throat> sound like goofy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I can't laugh at pickle negito. Do I want to lie? You're doing pickle negito. This guy kind of kind of sounded like pickle negito apparently, so chat started doing it. Okay, at least there's somewhat of a reason. Yeah, thank you for the water. Do you want anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Reem, ICN, and Zam haven't achieved yet. He grins, admiring the sentence he just produced. What happened? Indeed what? The revolution. The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. Whoa, you can talk? He nods. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to never made to market. Is that correct? Never made to market? I don't know enough about markets. Feld's move to Revishal backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated the those very advanced prototypes possibly from this very building or one of the adjacent roads okay so can we get something that can play that 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 um that thing that we had we can't even look at our inventory we have we have some computer thing right he pauses points to their building and continues all this was built by feld even the boardwalk wild pines built martinez proper as a resort for their middle management Feld built the side of town for r d you're saying that feld electrical built this boardwalk look under your feet they killed that guy what happened to the engineers, the company people? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. 
A what? A pleasure wheel. Lieutenant looks wistfully at the horizon as if picturing Guindulas rising to the sky. Perhaps re reminded of a childhood memory, it's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, the Lurin, their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but Reeves before Feld arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation and cybernetics, but history had other plans. W we need to attract fucking engineers? I know. Let's build them a Ferris wheel. What? What happened to the engineers, the company people? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. He smiles again as if he's personally... As if he's somehow personally responsible for this bleak turn of events. But this story is a bit too dark for little M Mikhail here. Now, if you're asked about tape computers, he means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. Oh, man. The communists, the, co the communists not understanding how the economy works killed, killed everyone here. Turn to Mikhail. He means they all got shot in the head because they were bourgeois. Now, do you know what the bourge bourgeois is? We're not saying that. Tape computers, right? Tape computers, he nods, wind tossling? Toss that doesn't look right to me. Is that spelled correctly? Tossling? It probably is. Towsel. Towseling. Towsel. 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 Schadenfreude. 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 Take computers, he nods, wind, tousling his suit jacket. What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications, he says, while his son looks up, idly chewing on the corner of his warm theme coloring book, but also to write and send out press releases, the most notorious example being Le, de, Le Decret de Mars. Fucking more German. What was that? What's the March... Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachal on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text actually, a songwriter I know, Charret, not Charlotte, Charret, called it a love poem to Revachal on her political concept album, Bonds Baziers de Insulind. You should read it. Every local library in Revachal stocks a copy of the decree. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. He looks at his son who starts giggling his face hidden behind the book, or while tried to. Someone someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of his book, already forgetting about this part of the conversation. How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking turn-of-the-century hardware. He raises his finger, remembering something. Buckle up! <sighs> Ten years ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Wompty Dompty Dom Center in Vertifort, Orange. Hajime, it raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ackerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Juice joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Wompty Dompty Dom Center? He did. He said Wompty Dompty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center, and who the hell are Keith and Guy Juice? Okay, the Wompty Dompty Dom Center, Paul Ackerman, Keith and Guy Juiced, what are you talking about? The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. There it is again, those words. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels, that's what... Read that wrong. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... You're making this up, turn to Lieutenant Kim. Is he making this up? Thought gained Wompty Dompty Dom Center? In, fa in fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center, he says casually, is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vertifort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center, he clears his throat. But perhaps I sh oh my god, I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even, but not that fragile. One could write through... <laughs>
hit one, one could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations, and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Nod. Cool. Pfft, I've seen cooler things than that. Cool. Very, very cool, he agrees. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionaries setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The Feld playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. I hate the communists, Hajime. I turned myself into a liberal. An ultra-liberal. Wait, the Feld playback, ex playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype, some sources report it as the Feld Playback Experience, but those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Oh my god, who knows? Maybe it was an accident, and, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now, all three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remains inside that building. He takes a step back, the boardwalk creaks mournfully in the wind. I want to ask something else, did we? But of course, what else? He smiles and ruffles his kid's head. I want to hear about the Feld building again. <sighs> do we? No, we're done. You look someone who has money. Do you have any money? I do have some money, yes, but that's not really what's important here. He brushes it off like it's not a thing at all. No, I mean, come on, you need the money. If it's not a thing, he can give you some. I don't want your money. I just want to see if whether my profiling skills were working. Of course, detective. I wouldn't have assumed anything else. Matter of fact, he looks up again, a playful hint shining in his eyes. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the Vespertine Department of Justice has published a rather interesting paper on the criminal profiling in former socialist states. Have you read it? If not, then you should definitely sh you definitely should. If not, if not for tips and tricks, then just th for theoretical curiosity. Anyway, that's just a little something that sprang into my mind. He squeezes his son's shoulder lightly, you were saying? Great, thank you for all the interesting information. No, thanks to y No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. What? Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking, whatever. I feel like these should have some, like, some music when they activate. I think that would have been good. There's no way to open the Supply Depot door. Accept it. You cannot open all the doors. You have to integrate this into your character. Some doors will forever remain closed, even if every single other door will open at one time or another, maybe to a key or maybe to some sort of tool meant for opening doors, but this one will never accede to such commands, a realization crucial to pers personal growth. Crucial. All Psy white checks unlocked. M minus one half light, no fear. Oh. Okay, that wasn't very good, was it? Wompty Dompty Dom Center. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. It's Wednesday evening and something heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered beneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old wonder twins Guy and Keith Juiced are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibition. It's the Wompty Wompty dom de domus domiest event of the year and all the cool kids have rsp spv'd where are you if if you are not there read that badly all right minus one suggestion outsider this seems like an art thing to me definitely get wompty dompty center all right full thought cabinet all right we're getting wompty dompty dom center all right we're full of thoughts now we're full of thoughts I feel sorry for this kid. Having such a nerd for a dad. Good thing my kids don't have to go through that. Where are we? Tiny cages carefully constructed. What? These soggy logs smell of ignition fluid. Still, they won't light up. It's almost impossible to get a fire going near the, this near to the ocean. These heavy military blockades are really with bullet holes crumbling. Lots of people out there miss the good old days. That patch of reeds over there, it's a great place to hide something, kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. 
Wait, I can't see anything interesting. You don't have a reason to, yet. Wait, what is this about? Nothing, just a hunch. The hunch passes, leaving you there by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. The boy bobs in the water to the number says on it says 11. What? What? Okay, please, 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 please don't have big long conversations. Please. Hello. Oh, I'm Gary. God. How do you do? Damn officer? it, Gary has voice acting. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Yellow man. I, I mean, officer. Whoa. Gary. Gary the crypto fascist. What? The crypto racist? The tenant raises his eyebrow slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man, interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Oh, it's the the guy's, the, the, the woman's husband. Not all over the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. I'm both. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much to see the truth inscribed upon thy own visage. Pretend thou art a par paragon of virtue. I am neither of those things, I can assure you. I am I'm a by-the-book, clean-as-a-whistle officer of the law. I'm not even tempted to touch intoxicants. Degenerates? I've been trained to identify the slightest hint of degeneracy by the preeminent authority on it. Drunks and degenerates, that's my crew. Sadly, I think I might be a drunk or a degenerate, maybe even both. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Let's go number two. Oh, uh, I didn't mean it in any scientific way. His gaze shifts nervously to the pile of soggy logs at his feet. Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling in rags? Is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. Are you a cryptozoologist too? You were surprised to see my colleague, Kitsuragi. Is this your mug? My mug? Why would you think that? You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. As soon as you were calling, it to, calling to it longingly when you cried yellow man. I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. You look like the kind of guy who might have a collection of mugs like this. Home. In his colonial mug collection. Oh my god. Have we found the, found the, the guy? You said yellow man. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found on the scene of a lynching? Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash. Oh, mystery solved! Oh, man, we're so good. We're so good at solving mysteries. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have. And I'm very sorry, officer. He pauses. You're not going to find me, are you? I am. Rip out a fine slip for 20, 20 real. I am. Rip out a fine slip for 100 real. I am. Rip out a fine slip for 250 real. The maximum. Okay, um, do we get the money? Maximum fine? Maximum fine. I don't think he he is gonna take the maximum fine. Do we get the money? If we get the money, we should go for number one. He's not gonna pay a hundred or two hundred fifty. He he definitely deserves it for being racist, but like twenty real. He accepts the slip of copy paper with a bow. Okay, I deserve that. I won't do it again. You have my word. I don't know what got into me stuffing my garbage in another man's property. It's I've been having trouble at work lately. The coach co's are price dumping us out of out of competition. What did you do, Gary? says all capital Morel man. Nothing, nothing. Just answering some questions, helping out the law. How did you get into the trash container? Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanging behind the whirling rags into that trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers in Martinez. I want the key. That upon wants the key. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the whirling trash compactor to store my own stuff, he says, bowing shamefully like a fallen knight. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. Another fine. Another fine. I'm sorry, okay. I should. I, sh I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgrace, Lieutenant raises his eyebrows and looks up. No need for the his histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't ha answer. Gary, did you put your clothes of a murder, the clothes of a murder victim? Blah, 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 blah. Officer, please, he raises both hands. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I have... I live right across the yard from where he was hanged and I saw him stripped naked, all the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling people or animals, you know. Yes, yes, what happened? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. 
Okay, I was coming to throw the mug away, and while I threw the mug there in the clo threw the mug there in the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Lieutenant remarks drolly. Drolly? Drolly. It's like very droll. So drolly. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across the hardwood floor. What? Okay, you've heard the sound before, but where? What's that strange sound? What sound? The clinking I just heard when you moved. Don't mess with me, I think you know what I'm talking about. Really? He fans his arms out slowly, this time he motions, his motions are soundless. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Challenging success, the sound you heard was not the sound of, was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Maybe it has like glass, glass balls and they were clinking together. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. He changes his mind. I mean, yes, of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. Let's move on for now. Conclude. I hope I could help your investigation. In my small way, he's visibly relieved it's over. Hmm. Does this mean you were in his apartment admiring his colonial mug collection? Maybe... Perhaps it would be interesting to tell him. Do you know anything about the man behind the rolling rags? Okay. Why is he shifting around like that? Analyze Gary's composure. Composure to clinking sound. All right. Okay, let's try. Let's get our composure up. Composure. No bonuses to composure. <sighs> nice. I kind of wish there was like... I guess it would be too clunky to have them all here, but I wish there was a just like maximize for this one. You just hit the button and it just automatically does it for you. Like th this is not fun. Okay, let's save it in case we die. We haven't saved it in a while, but we're not going to save. Always Scum. a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. <sighs> oh, I really don't like this guy. I really don't like this guy. Seventeen percent. Is he? He's looking comfortable enough. Maybe it was just beads. Sounds like sound like beads. But what kind of beads might a man like Gary be hiding beneath his clothes? Gary, are you cross-dressing by any chance? What? Are those prayer beads I keep hearing? Are you currently sporting some anal beads? Fuck it, we're doing it. Lieutenant leans in con confidentially. You wouldn't be able to hear it if he was were if he were wearing anal beads, he whispers. <laughs> Kim, how do you know? I mean, it's common sense, but... <laughs> Kim, I love you, Kim. I love you so much, Kim. Please excuse my colleague's humor. Working in this murder case is taking a toll on both on us both. You don't quite have to answer that yet. What he means is working on the case is taking a toll on you, and working with you is taking a toll on him. Of course, of course. He forces a grin, no doubt hiding some colossal anal beads up his butt as he does so. <laughs> Do you know anything about the man hanging behind whirling in rags? I told you everything I know, sir. I'm truly sorry for the mug, but I have nothing I have nothing to do with that. He shifts uncomfortably in his clothes. Uncomfortable shifting around doesn't make him the killer though. It's something else. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No no. I help Morel with research sometimes, but I've learned some things along the way, but I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time and moral, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. I'm into cryptids. Do you have a favorite? Oh yes, the burning rhino. Moral doubts he's real, but I don't. I don't much care because I won't be the one looking for him. Out in Safri Sar Sarai. Safri Sarai. What's a burning rhino? A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. How do they burn? They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it had wings of fire. It was a fucking Pokemon. But how is this combust? How is this combustible fluid lit? How does the lighting of this fluid actually work? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its its back ablaze. That seems unlikely. I can buy into that. A flaming rhino. I want to be just like that rhino, running through the night with guns blazing. We don't really do that around here. Perhaps we should have more perhaps we should have more such decisive action in Revishal. You know, this city used to be a fl used to be flaming rhino once. What? A flaming rhino, maybe. A long time ago, he says, and then pauses thoughtfully. Why only the males? The flames are not just for decoration. They are an in integral part of the beast's mating behavior. How so? During the burning rhinos... 
mating season, herds of male rhinos all aflame encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Local peasants call it the passion ring. They fear the, the rhinos, as perhaps they should, anyway. Lieutenant sighs without looking up from his notes. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some, some even spiritual. Fan art of the door opening scene, as well as your daily routine as I imagine it. <laughs> oh man, this is, it's a, you, you made a GIF. Is this the first Merrick GIF? I think there's been one before, wasn't there? I know it's GIF. I'm trolling you guys. Come on. I wouldn't say GIF. I wouldn't say, come on, you know me. You know me. I wouldn't say GIF. Actually really annoys me when people call it GIF. Here we go. Banging against the, the, the double six dice door. Oh. Uh, but wait, there's more. The Witcher version. <laughs> and uh, s s something else. <laughs> Please play a song for this. Um, I think I have a good one that can go for this. What, did you guys think it was gonna be a Yaya? Come on, come on. Thank you, Merrick. You were surprised to see my colleague, Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here or anywhere other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Do you have a problem with Seolites? No, no problem at all. He flashes an impenetrable smile at Kim. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the Lieutenant isn't here, if you can remember it. So Gary, you live nearby, in an apartment in Martinez, point in this direction. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Have you found your door open lately? Are you a big, big man of Hemdall fan? Mr. Claire must be very angry with you. I think I broke into your apartment. I'm very sorry. And you're a big man from Hemdall fan? The color drains from his face. How? Oh no, I, I'm committed to telling him I was in his apartment now. Mr. Everett Claire thought it necessary to unlock your apartment. I saw the poster in your apartment. You know, I'm a hem dollar man myself. I saw the ridiculous poster in your apartment along with your other colonialist memorabilia. But why were you my apartment officer? Just doing Mr. Claire a small favor. Mr. Claire asked me to get your door open. I figured I'd take a look around while I was at- Ah, oh, damn it, where's the option to lie? Shit. Just doing Mr. Claire a small favor. So you work for Everett Claire. He realizes what's going on and changes his tone. Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. The man looks around, whispering. He makes sure no one hears you talk. Really, I don't even know what it was about. I just opened the door. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but he doesn't like you. <laughs> Try not to shit yourself, Gary. It's just an open door. Nod grimly. Our discussion on this topic is over, Gary. Of course, of course. He looks around nervously. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you or the union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vane has turned, the lieutenant remarks with a smirk. He cannot be unturned. <laughs> my, my, how the weather vane has turned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Oh, nice! 42%. We can't lose. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive muscula musculature, something worn under underneath it. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. He freezes and sighs heavily. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once I was. He unbuttons the shirt. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Moral. I've got apologizing to do. <laughs> No, you've got explaining to do. The lieutenant tone is icy. I'll check out his 3D model. It looks nothing like his portrait. Yeah, this that's that happens a lot in the game. I wonder if they'll do a pass and and um, tidy that up. Give me that armor now. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Why did you lie to me, Gary? Give me that armor now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A 
cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view as soon as it soon it is in your hand smelling the sweat now i get to wear it why did you really put those clothes in the trash everyone was picking those pieces off him and i was watching them do it and they scattered his clothes all over the yard everything was smelling he looks at his feet so i went to there to take out my trash and started cleaning up all those rags on the ground him swinging up there and he swallows i had a lapse of honor sir i thought he's a foreigner they all say he wasn't from here only the curious 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 really curious curious queerass Ex excuse me queerass pardon queerass queerass <laughs> Only the queer ass was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known to give you guys trouble, I wouldn't have. His lips start quivering. Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. Lieutenant juts something down. Juts? Jots something down in his notebook. It was, <laughs> it was a it was a loose end and you're trying tying it up now. <laughs> Someone's saying anal bead in the queer ass. <laughs> no. I'm so fucking sorry I called you yellow man. He says silently, see all light officers commanded with the Suzerain Na Suzerain's Navy. Most of them sided with the king when he shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what lieutenant thinks of this, this hurt historic apology his face does not belie emotions why did you lie to me gary because i was weak he says staring at nothing in particular i should have told you the moment i saw you but the hell gary you in trouble i'll explain later he doesn't muster up the strength to yell do you know who killed the hangman i always thought it was the union but i sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore you have my word i don't know i won't be running my mouth on the subject anymore that is all he knows are we done here gary Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. He looks around. Is is it the thing gone from his model? I thought it was white before, right? He looks around, relief of some burden. His mouth is still quivering. I won't mess with Mr. Claire either. You have my word. Thanks for your cooperation. All right. Time to put it on. Pain threshold. Volition. Empathy. Pain threshold. Whoa, this thing looks weird. The Bow Collector. It's early in the morning. The world is dark blue. The sparks light her face. A delicate composition of triangles. The street seems to grow longer like a doll like in a dolly zoom. And there's something in the air as you stand there and wave back at the shape growing smaller and smaller. Something that has always been there. A great see-through world. The tenderness you feel. The ghost of Revachal between you carrying your signals. The holy messenger. Shivers plus three. Oh, nice. That's, that's so many shivers. Holy crap. Okay, I thought for sure putting this on would, would make it so, you know, you get some sort of like, hey, there's something in the pockets, but no. This increases our morale. Oh, this is pretty good, actually. Minus one empathy, but like, instead it was just drama, right? Encyclopedia, minus one perception, visual calculus, minus one drama. Do we want to put the mega... Ooh, excuse me, Menabino's prescription um, lenses on for more encyclopedia instead of visual calculus. So let's go with that one. Why not? Minus one perception. No, I like perception because then we get to see things around. I, li I like perception. You thought you'd find goody goodies rooting around in his queer ass? Yep. Is that really how that's supposed to be pronounced? It doesn't seem right to me. Okay. Time to talk to this guy for another uh, another hour. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this jam. This guy's model matches. Thank you, Rockhouse and her bits. How do you know when a politician is lying? Their mouth is moving. Ooh. You see everyone like ragging on Bernie today? Hillary Clinton said, said it's so mature. Leaders of the world, Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders, no one likes you. <laughs> That's what I say to fucking Morgana. Like Bernie, no one likes you. <laughs> 
fuck are you guys talking about? How, how is this fucking so, something you're saying? No one likes you. <laughs> oh, shit. Ralph Clouds used another 100 bits to say, what do you call a political mug? A member of the cabinet. That's pretty good. Pretty good. No one likes you, Bernie. Ralph Clouds used another 100 bits. Uh, why should most politicians be six feet down? Because deep down, they're really good people. This is getting a little spicy. A little spicy. Political and spicy. I like it. I like it. And then Punkridge Starfish used 100 bits to say, Eat his queer ass. I don't know. I think it's a lot of armor to eat. I don't think we can do it. Are we easing up on politics because of, uh, because of Disco Elysium? I don't know. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Oh, the police. Hello, officer. You must be Moral, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. You don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get ah, back. Of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damned waterlock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. The 81 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to pass, not like walking over a nice water lock. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine I cr when I crossed it. Let's tell. Let's be honest. You broke the water lock with the motor carriage, but there was a billboard in the canal, not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. No, see, I jumped over the canal in my motor carriage, tearing through the Sam Samaran butter sign, which fell into the canal, blocking the gates. I used the pawn shop as a launch ramp. I guess you're right. No, let's just, let's just yeah, yeah no, number one. Yeah. Why? Why? He spreads his arms in disbelief. Because I needed to drive into the ocean. Because I'm insane. It was an experiment to gauge the Copris 40s aerial performance. I'm something of a gentleman scientist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. Yes, Gaddy, we can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the Phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. Did he say we can go back now? He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. For all his passion, th this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Tell me about these traps. Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. All right, I'll get going. Hold on. I want an, I want this this thought. Wompty Dompty Dom Center. All right, here we go. What do we get from it? You're at home, stupid cop, and not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sp Braz Satura and Sparkling Wine. And let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Encyclopedia. Passives give plus 10 and plus 2 real. S minus 2 suggestion. I'm now a pretentious wanker. All right. Well, now I'm now I'm not even role playing anymore. What? How does how does that work? How do we just get money from doing an encyclopedia check? Oh man, we have so many skill points. Uh, what did we just lose from that? I f I forget. We lost suggestion. Shit. Our suggestion was already pretty low. I guess it can't go below. No, actually, psych base three. Fuck. Okay. Maybe we should put the encyclopedia glasses on now so we can get more money. Minus one perception. We should take them off while we're walking around and put them on during conversations because that's what the game is turned into now. Oh boy. Hello, hello. What can I do for you, officer? Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Hmm, well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmode, a ghost insect that disguises itself as plant matter, in this case, the reeds. He looks around. Awful lot, awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have developed uh, other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. What sorts of specialized techniques has phasmid using to hide itself? Is my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception? Impeding pattern, impeding pattern 
recognition, confusing the visual cortex. I don't know why I had trouble reading that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolved without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. Conceptualization. A ghost insect, he said. These people are looking for a ghost. Ghost insects? So you're ghost hunters? No, that's precisely what we're not. We are zoo zoologi zoological, zoological, right? Not zoological. Zoological specialists. Cryptozoology. Yeah, okay. Looking for an extant species of phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One, one known species of phasmid called the Megaphasmodizionis is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So he leaves the conclusion up to you. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? Doesn't seem like to be as, doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. He flashes you a sideways smile. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than the than the un, than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulidian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, he shakes his head. How are you getting funding? Do you have the encyclopedia skill too? Is that how you just get money? What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Alright, let me pass a fucking impossible check to get one for you. Not yet. He holds up an index finger. That's what makes it a cryptid. Hmm. The lieutenant interjects, just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real, the cryptozoologist says bris brusquely, brusquely, um, enough that he, that even he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, he says, gathering himself, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the, that the insulidian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Lena said there have there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for the species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe the insulidian phasmin has died out. The cryptozoologist shakes his head vigorously. I have to resist that. The thought, such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis? Parth parthenogenesis or parthenogenesis? Nice. Oh man, how are we getting all this money? Here comes the money. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to, to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. How are we getting money from this? This is weird. This, this actually bothers me. I don't know why I'm drawing the line here. This actually bothers me. That's pretty clever. The male is is a deficient life form. The world would be better off if women didn't need men to reproduce. Females reproducing without males? A travesty, a crime against passion and common sense. This arouses no special feelings in me. That's pretty clever. Yes, the insulidian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I try my best to remain dispassionate. Penny for your thoughts, Joe? Oh, there we go. You, you made it okay now. I understand. All right. What the fuck? I love this skill now. Tell me more about these traps. Well, he points to the cage of mesh and wiring on the ground. They may not look impressive, but Lena discovered desi designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed the traps? Yes, he says with some pride. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel, and having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exo skeleton what are you using as bait locusts he gestures toward the trap nearly all known phasmids are herbivores of course but we've hypothesized that the insulidian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects inside the traps a number of locusts crawl and tumble over another in a tiny chittering swarm a meat-eating stick insect does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush <sighs> behavior this seems unlikely a carnivorous stick, stick insect seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to s satiate your skepticism. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis using locusts as bait accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams which use plants. We have given this some thought. Let me ask you about something else. 
Yes, what? Lena seems pretty eager for you to return, and I'm eager to return to her, I assure you, but I can't leave before we finish with these traps. He looks south where Lena would be. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Moral, we've been... Come on, Moral, we've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. I mean, he's not that far away. And leave the traps? Absolutely not, he yells in response. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. And my anal beads. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting on record. One of only four of the century and it's hers. Really? She sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. He coughs and continues. Wow, can't wait to go back to her and spend another 20 minutes talking to that character. Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phas phasmidoid. There we go. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulidium Phasmid together. I can't abandon the course now. Another cough into his fist this time. Well, why isn't she here? Maybe you could go back to the whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later. You should just give up on this bug hunt. Okay, I understand. Don't give up on things either. I don't give up on things either, number one. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? Kim and I will do it for you. He's dead set on this. What if we do? <laughs> <laughs> what if we check the traps for you? He looks at you with obvious surprise. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method. I am, I am a scion. I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and above all, persistence. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south on this little peninsula by the boathouse there. He points south. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there on your way to the old radio tower after the church. The third is set near the canal where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them he gestures up to the tra trap in front of him. You should check this you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still better safe and, and stupid than sorry. This seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular adventure? The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification and its own reward. I get money every single time I update my encyclopedia, Kim. I'll give you half. What, aren't you having fun? Even relative to examining a week old corpse, I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as fun, but have it your way, detective. If you think it's important, you have been right before. What do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once, just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's, oh my god, we're gonna drop it. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. What if I encounter the Phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, he takes out a small white spray can. I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. What? It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. It will last about a week. Lay it on me. Thick. Present your armpit. Thick. He douses you with the odd smelling spray, a double helping as you present your other armpit, and then gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, a longing crumbling into the water. Lieutenant wrinkles his nose, I hope you're not buying this, he dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. What? It is precious, a single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Damn, that's that's 25 encyclopedia checks. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He looks back at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts the spray back in his pocket. I'm ready, let's get to it. Right, which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid really business you want to discuss, you'll have you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital? On the hunt. How did you become a cryptozoologist? I, I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a, cryptids is a bit of both. So you're living your you're living your childhood dream out here. His eyes narrow. It's not child's play just because I have a have to 
traipse through the mud every so often. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? He scoffs at the concept. I know you th you think one is a respectable profession while the other is superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession, just like any other. Honestly, being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Cryptozoology does seem like a lot of wishful thinking. Let's see number two. Hmm, a hum and an odd. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence, and I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. And and has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? I have yet to catch a cryptid, if that's what you're getting at, but I have come close. What kinds what kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional lore to newspaper accounts like the one that brought us here to look for the phasmid, I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and rumination. Re remuneration. Remuneration? Remuneration. It's remuneration, right? The first one. Moon, not real research. And certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. Is that spelt wrong? No. Remuneration. 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 I thought it was remuneration. Remuneration. Huh. Queer ass. So, you have never discovered a cryptid. No, very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden in the cryptid's prim to stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So, how many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Zoo Zoo Local Society, Cryptozoo Local Society of Chimney, which is four thousand eighty-two items long, about two thousand have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, re refutation, and data collection. Only two have been proven to be real. Yes, the Shautakuan forest pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Yugo Grad, who is honestly quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. Most cryptids are hoaxes or are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of 4,000 is not even 1%. Not approvingly. Then the Insulidinian phasmid will be the third. Yusuke's all in on this. Indeed, he does not smile, just looks looks you in the eye. It's a forceful gaze. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. Eh, from Rivershall to Doshan... Do, do, do Santo, it will be a zoological miracle. The hair on your arm stands up. Electricity sounds like Reed hissing. He has clearly done his math on done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Thanks for explaining that. Now about something else. Let's talk about specific cryptids. We have a fun chat. He eyes you skeptically. All right, what cryptids precisely? I usually don't. I usually discuss these things with specialists, so so I don't know what. We would have to discuss, he wants to say, but sides against... Oh my god. Oh! Why does this game about reading have so much reading? We would have to, we would have to discuss, but he wants to say, but sides against this, as you offered help. What cryptid did you almost catch? You said before you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story one non-specialist would find rather dull. Medium success. Willow people, not at all. What are willow people? They're not really, they're not people really. Some argue that they're not even animals as they seem to have evolved directly from trees, he says in a self-explanatory everyday manner. They're very, very thin, almost flat. In fact, in, in fact, sorry, what? They're very, very thin, almost flat, in fact. I feel like that common probably shouldn't be there and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmin we're looking for here. Wait, so I may have seen these willow people without knowing it? You probably have. How did you almost catch a willow person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. What? It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting and hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove, and then... I chased it with a net, not very elegant, but you can't be elegant in the field, and well, it was faster than me. 
A lavender shadow, he smirks. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, he raises his finger. I am not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I am painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. This is a serious possibility that I saw... There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel, a scoitel, or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. And Linus sighting of the Phasmid is that confirmed, he replies quickly. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptic sighting. I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the Gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes, but do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? Living? No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous rum, rum, ruminant, ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. Oh my god, I'm in. All right, tell me every. Okay, wow, I'm suddenly a little less tired. What the fuck is the Dread Moose? Yes, the Dread Moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has ever been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Hold on, does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Okay, what does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary Arden moose. Aw. Then how can you tell if it's the ordinary or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful and hard to identify. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? I'm not completely sure about this dread moose. I am 100% behind the dread moose. I utterly believe it exists. Of course you do. The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more sightings in Vasa reaching back four centuries. But of course, nothing sa satiates the skepticism of... A detective, he finishes the sentence for him, then his tone turns surprisingly mild. Pardon me, I did not I did not wish to seek conflict. It's simply my training to question things. Understood, Lieutenant, the man tips his hat slightly and then looks to you. I know the biggest cryptid, the giant of Coco Nur. That's impressive, I guess. He does not seem that impressed, but have you seen it with your own eyes? Yes. No. Have you seen it? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco Nur, no, and I likely never will. The Samar Skilt Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. I fear this mindless bar barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently, while they once used to be constant. Yes, sightings of mirages are constant. A mirage is a constant phenomenon that people have no time to report when a war is going on. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it as he was inquiring before he was just being defensive i know about cryobacter catlensis oh everyone knows about that one thanks to professor Mian miano being the first of the town for a time he coughs in his fist Man, how do you go from Dread Moose to this? Although probably because his life ended as a result of his work in Katla, no one remembers his contributions in, into the search of the Nong Ok. The Nong Ok, a flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nong Ok to run faster than any other avian, perhaps any other animal. Who knows? When it's not hunting its prey in this manner, the Ok hangs from tree branches like a bat waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Majanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago, in the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. A chasm of academic pretension still still stood before us, even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. It's Lena. It's Lena. Your friend Gary told me about the burning rhino. Did he? He lowers his voice. That one's a hoax. Some serious rice farmers set fire to, rhino to rhinoceros cadavers and used them to scare tourists. And used them to scare tourists. To scare tourists. Gary obliviously stares at the stage, safe in the knowledge that burning rhinos exists. Have you told Gary this? What if the other cryptids are hoaxes too? See, Kim, one of them is a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? He hasn't been paying attention. The burning rhinoceros. Mm -hmm. The burning rhino is where they draw the line. He's unimpressed. Have you told Gary this? Many times. It o I always turns into an argument. Wow, the mistakes. I don't want to repeat it. The rhino holds a special place in his heart. Let it. Myths are a part of my field. 
What if the other cryptids are hoaxes too? Many of them probably are. Statistically speaking, about 20% of all cryptids are verified hoaxes. I thought it was like 98%. Uncovering falsehoods to deliberate fabricated to fool the public is just as much as my calling as finding new species, if perhaps slightly less enjoyable. I knew it couldn't be real. Did you? He seems incredulous. It's, it is almost as difficult to confirm a hoax as it is to confirm a sighting, a cough. How can one confirm a hoax? Just tell me about a cool cryptid, any cryptid. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. Pedagoga? Pedagogu? Mario? I don't know if I would have done... I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me, I'm not a people's person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My, my strength lies in field work and persistence. He brushes an errant strand from hair of hair from his eye. Yeah, you've barely spoken this whole time. Did you know Gary was hiding the armor? Hell no, I had no idea. I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty or disloyalty are not one of them. Thanks, the man mutters in the distance. He doesn't dare say anymore. He's also really racist. He's still glad his friend stood up for him. I'll get going. Leave. All right. Wow, that was a lot. <sighs> All right, so um, is there any place in the game, like we have, I think, like five minutes left. Is there any place in this area that anyone would like me to go to real quick while we're while we're still here? Uh, is there like, like a place to go inside that's interesting and people want to see it? No boat in the boathouse today. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Um, or what? Morale, save a fair, visual calculus, morale. Karaoke. Karaoke we should do in the evening, right? It's not the evening yet. Karaoke at night, right? For sure. Uh, Ralph Cloud Season Abyss to say, it's only natural that politicians have a god complex. They haven't done anything in ages. They give all the best jobs to their immediate family. And no one really <laughs> believes in them. Oh, nepotism is funny. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw more all set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Look around. Behind you, a ruined residential building looms over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. They rustle confidentially, in tune with the pitter patter of the rain. When this distinct was, when this district was booming, the reeds were kept at bay. Nothing obscured the freshly painted facades. Nowhere for drunks and adventurous teenagers to hide. Now only the wind blows reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise, the lieutenant grins mirthlessly. Anyway, one down, three to go. Damn, I was hoping it would be in the first one. No need to grin. I'm not expecting to find anything. I'm helping some citizens and getting some fresh hair. I meant no offense, just the lieutenant doesn't look, doesn't know how to finish the sentence. He looks at you putting the trap back on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, Cam. I didn't mean to make you feel awkward. Should we reload to make him not feel awkward? The boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. All right, so people want me to go into the tent. I think I know where the tent is. Oh my god, look at all this shit down here. There's so much shit. The door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Okay, is this going to start a conversation? Sign says, entry interdict. An old ticket taker booth, no longer in operation. People paid money to park here. No one would pay now. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of the shaded bench covered in rust. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something, Something's definitely going down here. Some, something definitely gone down. Wait, what? Something's definitely gone down here. There you go. Hmm, correct. The lieutenant examines the wall closely. The density of the bullet holes is unusual, even in a general average bullet hole frequency in Martin A. Sense, Grim Affairs. Meaning... This is a lot of bullet holes. He brushes the wall with his hand. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire, something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Right, 83% is impossible to fail. Whoa, this is cool. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least, their heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, too quiet, no sound, no movement. 10 meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles primed, a gust of wind blows by, the coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Droplets of, whoa, what the fuck? Droplets of rain fall on the wooden planks, surrounding sand dunes. The clouds block out any rays of light. A long time has passed since the movement 
so since the moment of this fusillating, fusillating, fusillade, fusillade, fusillading, fusillade, fusillade, fusillade. Attack a place or shoot down someone's series of shots. Aim the same time or quick succession. I've never heard fusillade. of this word. Or if I have, I didn't look it up. Fusillading. Cool word. I like it. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a, a, a conscious round where only one soldier has a, lo has a loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Look at the people against the wall. Host of men and probably... Most of the men in probably in wait in in everyday clothes right from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar each and every one of them. I thought for I thought this was going to be like uh, before we crashed the car into the ocean, we came down here and shot up the wall for a bit. Who were they? You, your friends, your family, everyone you would ever know. This was you. Oh, maybe it was. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some, from some side, but from which one? Look at the person standing on the side. The command, the commandant. The one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was who in this execution? At first, Lieutenant doesn't say a word. He just stares at the wall. I don't know, he says finally. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the Civil War. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said... Nagito, remember what Nagito said about Feld. What if it was the Feld pers personnel when their assets were being seized by the revolutionaries? Lieutenant nods, another likely scenario. Or maybe, what about people from the coalition, the so-called moralists? Yeah, it's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in the situation, it was the commandant, the superior, giving the orders. Goodbye. Cold sea wind blows away the figures. Oh, nice. That was a cool sequence. All right. So, um, I think we're done. We'll do the tent tomorrow. Uh, I feel like there wasn't much progress done in the stream today, but I guess it there was like, we messed around at the beginning, but after that, it was just a lot of reading and that's it. So thank you very much, everybody. Sorry for the sleepy stream. I hope it wasn't too bad. I'm going to go. Um, I'm probably going to go pass out to be completely honest. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.